Hey, welcome everyone. Uh, we'll get started in about four minutes. Hello, hello, welcome, welcome. Good to see everybody here this evening. Happy Wednesday. Um, so a couple of housekeeping items before we get started. Um, I'm trying something different for this stream. Uh, I've upgraded my stream quality from, uh, so when I set up my, my streaming client at first, um, it recommended 720p. Um, at 60, at 60 FPS, but I decided that I'm gonna try and see if I can stream successfully in full HD because I think that's better for folks to read things on the screen. Um, and I've also, but then I've also lowered the frame rate because it's not like I'm gaming, right? So as long as you can see, you know, when I run something in the console, as long as you can see it, it doesn't really matter if it pops up immediately. So we're gonna try this. We're gonna try higher stream quality, reduced frame rate, um, 
and hopefully, you know, you can still hear me okay. And just let me know, you know, how things sound, how things look, if there's any problems. Um, hi, folks. Hi, hi, Silent. Uh, hi, Lee Baobab. Good to see you. Up and D, good to see you. Yeah, first time. All right. Awesome. Um, but yeah, so we're going to try this. Hopefully it'll be a little better quality for you folks. Um, and also, um, so my first, very first stream on Twitch was um, two weeks ago. And so at my current Twitch level, um, my, my VODs, my video on demand stored on Twitch expire after two weeks. So yesterday I downloaded my first stream, uploaded it to YouTube, and moved it to the 100 Devs Discord. So if you want to revisit that stream for any reason, um, you can find it pinned to the Mayan Wolf stream threads in the 100 Devs Discord at the top of the um, House Hamilton and Women in Tech channels. It's in both places. So you'll find all of my old YouTube streams, or sorry, all of my old um, Discord voice channel streams that got uploaded to YouTube and um, that first Twitch stream, they're all there now. So that's where you can find it if you ever want to find it again. Um, yeah, Rascal, that's kind of what I was figured. I, you say you've gone as low as 15 FPS. Exactly, yeah. We're gonna try this um, and I think it'll probably be fine because again, I'm not gaming. I'm not, it's not like I'm playing League or Dota, right? Where you got a bunch of little sprites running around really fast. So I think we're gonna be fine here. Yep. Okay, um, last thing is that I am, surprisingly, um, I got a message saying that I am now a Twitch affiliate. So still kind of figuring out what all that means. Um, but I met all the requirements actually a little sooner than I anticipated. <laughs> so I'm slightly unprepared. Uh, I'm gonna plan on getting you guys some custom emotes, um, some channel rewards so you all can you know do something as you accrue channel points. Um, you know, I wanna give you guys some fun stuff while you're watching the stream um, that you can, you know, so you can interact a little bit, um, just make it a little bit more rewarding experience for you guys. So I'm going to get there. Um, not ready yet. <laughs> oh, and yes. And unfortunately, one of the downsides of becoming an affiliate is that I automatically have to start running ads. As Leon has mentioned, it's not something you can just turn off. Um, oh, thank you, VR219. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, Rascal, suffering from success. Well, yeah, apparently I'm suffering from ads now. Um, supposedly, I you should only see ads when you first join the stream, um, theoretically, but the ad settings are extremely confusing. I think Leon's kind of alluded to that before. It's very confusing to try to manage, and I supposedly have scheduled ads turned off. We'll see if that's the case. If you do get an ad while you're watching, um, just you know, out of nowhere, um, do let me know. Um, and I'm going to, I'll have to revisit that, but I believe I've have scheduled ads turned off. So you should only see ads when you first join theoretically. Um, but yeah, so I'm still navigating all this stuff. Um, and so I appreciate your patience. Do let me know if you encounter anything unexpected. Um, and like I say, I'll get some channel rewards and custom emotes going for you guys after a bit. All right. Um, all that being said, let's go ahead and get into what we came here to do. Um, <clears throat> I have become a cog in Jeff Bezos' machine. Yeah, exactly. Right, right. <laughs> I have lost control of my life. Nah, no. Nah. Um, luckily, I mean, the, the, the settings are pretty customizable. It's just figuring out how to do it. So uh, tonight we're going to go ahead and review, um, you know, we had a lot of homework this week, right? I'm sure you all know. Like, we had a lot going on. Um, and so when thinking about what to review tonight, I decided to focus on the array homework. Um, yeah, yep, <laughs> we did. Yeah, I decided to focus on the homework that was specifically about array methods because that's kind of where the focus has been in class, right? Um, and so I thought, you know, this would be valuable to just review the javascript.info tasks um, and just give us more practice on all these different array methods and what they do and when to use them and that kind of thing. Um, and yeah, just kind of go over it together and, and talk through it a little bit. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and Folkman, I'm glad. I'm glad this was. I'm glad this was something that uh, that you agreed with as well. Good deal. Okay. Oh, and and thank you, uh, Executrix. Thank you. Um, but yeah, so so we're gonna go ahead and go over this tonight. Um, and again, I'm gonna switch to my. Um... Oh, thank you, Thievesel. Thank you. 
Much appreciated. Oh my goodness. Oh, and also, yeah. So now I'm affiliate. There is technically you can um, use your Prime sub or pay to subscribe to me. You are under no obligation to do that. Um, you know, it, obviously it's your choice if that's something you want to do. But I, I I'm never going to ask for that. Um, I'm not in this for money. So, you know, it, that's. I, that's not something I will ever ask you to do. You're welcome to just follow me and that way you'll get updates on my channel, but you are under no obligation to subscribe. But thank you anyway, I much appreciate it. And also um, somebody else had subscribed earlier today. Um, uh, Jenks, uh, yeah, if you're, not, if you're watching this, Jenks56, thank you also for the tier one sub. Um, okay, here we go. Let's switch to my window and um, Okay, so theoretically, you should be able to see that. And can anybody tell me? Oh, thanks, Theazel. <laughs> Much appreciated. Um, can anybody tell me? It, does it? Are, am I streaming in uh, 1080p? Am I? Because on my. Um, oh, great! Awesome. Good deal. Hopefully, that looks nice and clear for you guys. Great. Okay. Thank you. Awesome. Yeah, that'll look better on the YouTube videos too. And you know, we'll we'll, we'll play with it tonight and and see how it goes. All right. So I've got the um, the homework here in the left window, and I've got the um, up here in the HTML. I went ahead and I pasted in the um, sort of cheat sheet, the summary from the JavaScript.info um, array methods page. So we can kind of use this as a reference while we go to see what these different methods do and maybe when we should be using them. Crystal clear, all right, awesome, good deal. Okay, so I'm gonna get my um, notes pulled up here. Okay, so let's get into it. We've got 13 tasks that were in the javascript.info, um, and um, some of these were, I, I felt like some of these were harder than others. Um, I mean, I know the solutions are in the text, but I think it's still valuable to walk through these and figure out why why they work rather than just, you know, copying the solutions, obviously. So, um, you can't get the stream to play. Oh, no. Um, yeah, sometimes, I mean, if you can refresh, sometimes that works. Um, you can reduce the, you can manually reduce the quality, too. I know I'm streaming in full HD. Um, you could reduce it to 720p and see if that'll load faster for you. Um, the VOD will still be in 720p if you, you know, if you want to watch it in full HD later. Okay, so... Oh, there's no reducing quality at the moment. I thought there was. A, I thought you could change the settings for that. Oh, boo! That's lame. Got to be a partner to let you guys reduce quality. Jeepers! Well, that's gonna be a while. <laughs> oh, jeepers! All right. Well, sorry about that. Um, yeah. I mean, if if you can't get it to play, the VOD will always be available later. Um. Uh, thanks guys. I'm learning new stuff every day. Dang it, Jeff Bezos. All right. Um, so let's go ahead. Let's get into the first task. Um, the first task is basically it, we're, we're going to be modifying a string. Um, so it's asking us to say, write the function camelize string that changes dash separated words like my short string into camel cased my capital short capital string that is uh remove all dashes and each word after the dash becomes uppercase so it gives us some examples here um and then it gives us a little hint as well which is useful um so it tells us to use split to split the string into an array transform it and then join it back okay so um Or like two seconds and went out. Okay. Well, yeah, I hope it works for you. Sorry, BPC. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to make a new function. They tell us what to call this function. They call it, tell us to call it camelize. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Function camel. I keep reading caramelize whenever I, whenever I read this, but camelize. And we're going to pass in, and it tells us even what, what we're going to pass in. We're going to pass in something called str string. Um, so Inside of our function, we're going to go ahead and use the um, split method. Now, when I type this out, my solution is going to work the same as 
the solution in the text. So if you're following along, I mean, you can you can look at the solution in the text, but my solution is going to be written a little bit different just because I felt like the way the solution in the text was written was kind of confusing and it makes it hard to understand what's happening. Um, so basically we're going to, <laughs> caramel, yeah. <laughs> um, what we're going to do is um, we're going to use the split method first in order to split our the, the string that we pass in. We're going to split it into an array. Um, so let's do that first. Let's just do that first and we'll see what that looks like. So I'm going to say let new string um, equals string dot split. Now, what is so what split does is it basically, like it says, it splits a string into an array based on whatever symbol you pass in. So whatever whatever you tell it to split on is what it's going to split. If you don't pass in anything, if you pass in a blank, it'll just split every letter into the array. So, but in this case, we're passing in the dash. Um, so that's going to split that out into you know. Essentially, if we pass in my long word, it's going to split it into my long and word. Um, okay, so it sounds like safety vest. You're having trouble too. Okay, that's unfortunate. Um, yeah, I might have to reduce quality if folks aren't able to. Um, if folks aren't able to get a stable stream, I could also uh, reduce the frame rate too. That might help. Hey, blah. Good to see ya. <laughs> and hey, Zori melts. We're just getting started here. Um, Okay, so let new string is string split, and then um, I'm going to also then just, I'm just going to return new string. So we're just going to see how this looks. All right, so new string, um, and then I'm going to just console log this function. And we're going to keep adding this as we go. I just kind of want to show what each step is doing. So console log camelize, and then we're going to pass in, I believe the example that it gives is this word this word okay so let's run this and just see what we get just from what we have so far <laughs> hey um here we go yeah okay so see what we get um and i think there was a question there um every character no um so if we didn't pass in anything here if we, if we just left this blank that then we would get every character split out. Yeah, so see what it did there? If we didn't pass in any um, any symbol here inside of our split method, then it splits it by, it turns it into an array of every single character, including the dash. But since we specifically passed in the dash as the thing to split on, then it says, oh, okay, that's my separator. So now I'm going to run it and split it out into basically an array of two elements. Yeah. Um, okay, so let's continue to add to this. That was just the first thing it told us to do, right? So it said use split to split the string into an array, transform it, and then join back. Okay, so what do we need to do? What do we need to transform here, right? Um, we need to, um, essentially what we need to do is we need to cycle through each element in the array so we need to cycle through this, and we need to cycle through Word, and we want to map it essentially to a new array. So we're gonna we're gonna use the map function, and we're just gonna say um, new string equals new string dot map because we want we want to just we want to cycle through each element in the array, and what happens, what do we want to do if, so when we're, remember that we're doing camel case here, right? So in camel case, the first word in whatever phrase we pass in, the first word is always going to be lowercase, right? So how do we determine the first element in an array? How do we identify it? Zero, yes, yep, yep. So the first element in an array is always gonna have an index of zero, right? So, and again, when we're, since we're using map here, we need, to, we need to pass in a function. So we're just gonna do, we're just gonna do a, a quick function here. Yep, index zero, y'all are right. So we're gonna pass in word and 
index, okay? And so we're gonna say if index is zero, then what do we do if, if the index is zero? Index, yep. Yeah? So if index is zero, what do we wanna return? Word dot what? Remember, we're doing camel case here. What's it? What does camel case look like? Hey, Tristan's got it. Yeah, lowercase, right? Because, like, for example, like this is this is camel case right here. First word is lowercase. Second word is uppercase. So you got got there. This is a, my solution looks a little different from the from the text. So if you're just following along with the text. Let's, uh, let's engage the critical thinking skills here because my solution looks slightly different. I'm, in ca I'm, I'm um, compensating for something that they didn't compensate for in the text. Like, for example, in the text, what if they pass in, you know, what if you pass in something that has an uppercase word to start with? It doesn't, it doesn't correct for that. So yeah, lowercase, exactly. So we're gonna make sure that the first word is lowercase and that's, you know, so whoop, if I could spell, there we go. Yeah. Um, and then if it's any other index in the array, if it's index one, two, three, no matter how many words we pass in, we're going to, then we're going to return. Now we're getting a little bit um, funky here. So remember that words, you're thinking word as in, Word, yeah, well, Zori melts well, but still, in camel case, regardless, um, the first word in camel case is always going to be lowercase. So, yeah. Um, yeah, so anyway, so any other, any other word in the array, then we want to then take any other word in the array and make sure that the first letter in that word is capitalized. So, um, Remember that individual strings, so for example, the word this in our, in our or sorry, the word word in our, in our string um, can be treated as an array in itself. We can use array, can, we can use, you know, similar array logic within a single string. So what we want to do then is say for the first letter in each individual subsequent word, so word zero, that's when we use our two uppercase. Yeah, and I think that's what, I think that's Zori, I think that's what you were thinking as the, the second word is, um, that's when we use the uppercase, right? So now let's, let's return this, okay? Um, let's just, let's stop here for a second and let's see what we get. Um, so I'm gonna clear the console. And make sure I got all my brackets here think I did. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So now check it out. We've got our first word is now lowercase as expected. And then we have the first letter of the second word that has been made uppercase. And that's because we took essentially the first character of the second word, converted it to uppercase, but now we still need the second part of that second word, right? Um, and so again, thinking about the word as if it's an array, we are going to use, we're gonna use slice here because that's kind of just one of the methods that we're working on, we're learning how to use it. Um, treating a string like, string like an array. Yeah, exactly. Yep. And that's totally valid. That is, um, strings can, can absolutely function like arrays and you can use, you know, a lot of the similar, similar stuff on them. We're going to get kind of wild with it later when we get down to the calculator question. Um, so we're going to use slice for this, but what's another thing we could use if we wanted to? What's another method we could use? It's not strictly an array method. It's more of a string specific method. Does anybody know? To get a subset of a word? 
I think we used it in class um, yesterday. Yeah, Rascal's got it. Substring, exactly. And so I was actually thinking about this um, earlier today, and I was like, hmm, why on, you know, thinking, because if we're thinking about this as a, as a string, I mean, yeah, yeah, Zora, you got it, and Big Bada Boom, yeah, you got it. And so I was thinking about this earlier today, I was like, well, why wouldn't we use substring here? Well, and I did some, I did some Googling, and from what I um, can tell, it seems like slice and substring are extremely similar. Um, but actually, it seems as though um, slice is generally better because it has fewer unexpected um, side effects. Yeah, and it, that that could be true, uh, bottom boom. Yeah, and it seems like it seems like the the general consensus is that when possible, use slice. Um, slice works better. Yeah, it seems like there's some unexpected side effects that can occur with substring, um, and I don't know what those are, but somebody was you know. Uh, I was on Stack Overflow and somebody was writing out a bunch of formulas about how exactly they, they're the same and different. And I was like, well, okay, the general gist I'm getting is that we should use Slice. So that's what I'm going to use. Um, but I just thought that was interesting that they are essentially very similar in how they operate. We're stretching the reading. I don't remember. Them. Yeah, they weren't. I don't believe they were. Um, I do believe they were mentioned in class yesterday. And so that's what kind of brought it up in my brain. Um, I could be wrong, though. Um, but yeah, so for slice, so what are we going to do for slice? What, what are we going to pass in, um, in into our slice method here? Um, because in slice, now let's look at our little cheat sheet over here. Slice, start, and end. Okay, so we will, obviously we want to pass in a start value. So what's our start value going to be? Oh, interesting. <laughs> Yeah, it's going to be one. Um, yeah, interesting. You know, you don't have to think about yourself as like, what idiot wrote this? You can just be like, wow, think about today, how much more I know today than I did back when I wrote that the first time. So I am a lot like, I have accrued so much knowledge in just one week. Exactly. Um, okay, so yes, Zori is correct because we already did a, our transformation on the first letter. Now we just want to grab every single thing after that, right? So if we leave the end portion of slice blank, then that's essentially just gonna say, all right, I'm just gonna grab the whole rest of the word. Okay, so now let's run this again. And again, you know, we're using the plus sign here as a concatenate, right? I just love any excuse to say that word, concatenate. Okay, let's run it. Now we'll see what we get. Okay, yes, that's looking better, right? So now the only last thing we need to do is we, all we need to do is, um, get rid of that, there we go. So we're done with our mapping and uh, we are going to essentially just join the, join the parts back together, right? So new string equals new string dot join. And um, for our join method, let's go down to that here. Um, essentially, we're just going to pass in um, a blank here, um, which will put them like little, it'll just sandwich them right together. Yep, coconut, you're exactly right. A fun word in a work email today was confabulate. Oh my goodness. What does that mean, blah? I, I mean, I've heard it before, but I, I haven't heard it enough to know what it means. Yeah, exactly, Rascal. That's a good sentiment to have. Yeah, to have that feeling go away, that means you're just so much better than the past you. Yeah, that's an, that's an awesome word, Blah. I love it. I love funky words and using them um, in conversation. Okay, fix that typo. Now we should run it and it should work. I should have cleared the console because we can't see it. But yeah, so there we go down at the bottom. Um, it clearly says this word in camel case. So we did it. Go us. It means to speak or to fabricate an imaginary existence. Okay, yeah, the, the fab, fab in there, to fabricate, fab, confabulate. Very cool. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, Blah, that's cool. Okay, so yeah, so what we've done here is we've essentially created a um, camel case generator. So let's try something else. Let's try, um, 
this is a longer string. So I'm miss, you know, mixing up my cases there just to make sure that it works. So let's run this now. Should get both back. Okay, so in this case, you can see that we aren't correcting for when you get, um, you know, capitalizations in, uh, in other parts of the string. Now, it's, it still worked as expected for capitalizing the first letter. So that's just, that's additional, like, you know, error handling that you could do. Um, I don't think it's entirely necessary because, I mean, in camel case, it's not really strict that the rest of the word has to be lowercase. Um, throw a lowercase after the slice. Yeah, we could, yeah, that, that would work. A two uh, lower case. Yep, let's do it. Yeah, there we go. So that corrected for it. Um, you can see that this is lowercase, then we have upper, yep. So, and you, that's, a, that's, a, that, that's a good segue there and that you can, you know, you can kind of chain, you can chain these methods together. So we're using slice and we're using two lowercase, oops, whoa. Um, and we're using them at the same time. Um, so I think that's kind of neat that you can chain these together and, and stack them. Um, I think somebody had a question. Let me get back to it here. Um, so yeah, so 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 um, what Map is doing is let me see if I think it's let's see if it's in our cheat sheet here. Yeah. So here's our little here's our little cheat sheet, and it explains what it does. But um, so essentially, what it does is it looks at the array. And it, create, it, it technically creates a new array from the results of, of applying a function to every element in that array. Yeah. So we're, we're, we're mapping a new array, we're mapping a function onto the existing array and we get a new array out of that. That's all that, that's all that is. And the second question was, can you explain that word zero to upper? Yep. So. In this case, what we're doing is we're looking at the individual word in our array. So for example, if I was passing in this word, we've already split it out into an array of two elements, right? We split it out into an array of this and of word. But now we're looking into the word itself. So I'm looking in here and now we can treat this like a little mini array that has four elements in it. And so if I take word elements or index zero, I'm getting the W, right? And so I'm, all I'm doing is I'm saying just for the W in word, in this word, I'm going to capitalize the W and then I'm going to get the rest of the word, force it to lowercase and concatenate it with that W because what would happen, um, So many Legos, yeah, yeah. So, so okay. So, can anybody tell me what would happen if I didn't do this? What would happen if I just said word to uppercase? What would happen if I didn't if I didn't specify that I just wanted the first element? I'm gonna hydrate. <laughs> word. <laughs> yeah. Yelling. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yep. So in order to apply this in the way that we want, um, we need to single out only the first in the, the, the item at, at, at index zero, which is that W, capitalize that, and then rejoin it with the rest of the word, which we have also forced to lowercase. So yeah, essentially we're just forcing that capitalization of only the first letter because, you know, we think of capitalization as like a pretty simple task, right? You know, and then you just think of that, well, that's how a word is supposed to look when you do camel case, but your, your, your function doesn't know that. We gotta, we gotta brute force it here and, and, and make it understand that we only want the first letter to be capitalized and the rest of the word should be lowercase. Yeah. Okay, um, any other questions on this one?
but yeah, so I mean, the, and the, the, the solution in the text as well um, wrote it out in maybe a more efficient manner, but I felt like the way I wrote it was maybe clearer, at least more clear to me. Um, so, you know, you have, you can look at my solution or if, if my solution is too like blow in your mind, you can, you can look at the solution in the text and see if that makes more sense to you. But these, I did write these differently just because I felt like the, the text solution was maybe almost a little bit too, um, shorthand and hard to follow. I'm confused. Okay. Okay. I'm confused by the first index zero. Then you have another word zero. Okay. So yeah, that's a good, um, that's a, that's a good question. So, and that's, that's kind of the tricky, tricky thing about this, this question is that we actually have essentially two levels of arrays here. So we're passing in essentially our array of new string and on our array of new string um let's uh let's see let's do this real quick i'm just gonna i'm gonna back up a little bit and i'm gonna comment this whole section out we'll see if i do this right uh get this yeah okay so let's look again and see what what new string looks like So new string is basically an array that contains each word in what we pass in. It, you know, par it, it, it parses out each, L or each array element based on the dash, right? Because that's how we did our split. Okay, so what we're passing into our map function is essentially an array that consists of each word separately, right? So we're passing in each word in our array as word and the index here is essentially each of our array elements. So this is index zero, this is index one, this is index zero, one, two, three, and four, okay? So here we're passing in the index of our larger array, and if it's zero, if it's the first word in our array that we're passing in, then we make it lowercase. Else, we look into the word itself, now we've gone, we've gone from looking at the index here at this level, and now we're looking into the individual word letter by letter and making transformations. Does that, does that help, no caffeine? So we're, we're essentially, yeah, we're essentially diving a little deeper there. So first, we're, first we'll look in big picture, and then we dive into the word itself and treat it as an array and do our, do our manipulation inside the word. Yeah, good question. Okay, and sorry, my cat is here. He's gonna be loud. There's nothing I can do. <laughs> He's been very needy today. Okay, so any other questions there? <laughs> Kitty, please. Go cat go. Yeah, man, believe me, he, he goes. <laughs> Always going. <laughs> oh my goodness. Thanks, Ryan. Um, much appreciated. Yeah, he, he definitely wants it on the Twitch fame. Yep. He's a drama, he's a drama king. Um, okay, so next one, um, filter range. So we're going to write a function called filter range and we're going to pass in um, an array of R and then it's gonna, so we're gonna, uh, and then also two additional um, arguments, A and B. Um, they get an array R, looks for elements with values higher or equal to A and lower or equal to B, and then return a result as an array. Yes, thanks, Ryan. It is going well. I appreciate it. Um, the f now, here's the, here's the crucial part the function should not modify the array it should return the new array. Okay, so what that's essentially telling us is that we can't use any of the methods that are going to modify or destroy the, the array um, that we already have. We wanna make sure we use, only use methods that are gonna preserve the existing array allow us to, and allow us to create a new array. Um, Chanpo, which homework are we focusing on? Just got home from work. Um, yeah, so we're doing the um, javascript.info um, chapter on array methods. Yeah, thank you, Chemo. Yep, much appreciated. Yep. Uh, 
Um, yeah, so hit up the javascript.info um, on array methods, and uh, that's where we're at. We're only on question two, so you, you know you, you didn't miss all that much. Um, we're taking, we're, as always, we like to take our sweet time, make sure that we are, um, you know, really analyzing things and explaining things. So we're only on question two. Um, who knows? This this might be a this might be a, another bonus stream on Friday. We'll see. Um, yeah. All right. So. Uh, Let's now let's think about what 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 kind of methods we can use that aren't going to destroy our existing array. So over here on our cheat sheet, we can see that there's a little note here. Please note that methods sort, reverse, and splice modify the array itself. So, oh yeah, no problem. Um, thanks, Ryan. Much appreciated. Enjoy your evening as well. Um, yeah, so, so we don't want to use sort, reverse, and splice because we've been explicitly told that we aren't supposed to modify the existing array. Okay, so let's think about what we can do then. Um, so what, what other possible methods could we use? Let's go down here through our, through our, um, uh, our cheat sheet here. Um, map, yeah, yeah, that, that would work, that, that would, would definitely return a new array. Um, but what's a, what's, a, what's a method that we could use that um, would allow us to, I don't want to say the word, um, would allow us to rule out certain elements um, and it would, it would iterate through the array and rule out certain elements and only return values. Yeah, Jack Tree, you got it. You got it. Um, reduce, no, reduce in this case isn't what we want. Um, reduce is a little bit uh, misleading in the name. Reduce actually loops through an array and, and provides a running total. Um, but in this case, Jack Tree is correct. We're gonna use filter. Um, yeah, it's kind of like playing taboo. I know, <laughs> like I can't say the word filter. <laughs> yeah, I know. I couldn't think of a synonym. Um, yeah, so in this case, we're going to use filter because it's it, what that will do is it was it'll essentially take the original array, look it, it'll it'll take whatever sort of argument we pass into it, look for any values that meet that argument or that 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 meet that requirement. And then, yeah, technically, yeah, technically you can do it with reduce, um, but filter, yeah, filter is kind of purpose built for this kind of thing, exactly. Um, and, th and then what we're gonna do is then we're going to return a new array while still leaving the original array intact. Okay, so let's do that. So let me get, we're gonna do it right down here. Okay, so it said we, we needed to make a function called, um, uh, filter range. All right, so function filter range, and it told us what our, what we're passing in. We're going to pass in a r r a and b. Okay, and in there, um, we're just going to return a r r dot filter, um, and then um, essentially for each um, item. Uh, we're going to look to see whether it is um, greater than or equal to A and less than or equal to B. <laughs> yeah, Russell says you can do anything re if, with reduce if you really wanted to. If all you got is a hammer, yeah, everything looks like a nail, right? Yeah, and that's why I, I yeah, well, well, we'll get there eventually, but that's why I really don't like that it specified using reduce for the last question on this on this task list. I just I was just like, oh, there's a better ways to do that. But I guess they just really wanted to shoehorn it in there. Anyway, um, so we're just going to write a little arrow function here. Um, and essentially, it's just going to look through each item in the array. Um, and this is, I mean, we should, you know, we already know how to do this. We already know how to see if an item is less than or equal to something, right? We just say it's gonna be um, essentially between A and B, right? So it's gonna be greater than or equal to A and less than or equal to B. And this A and B, essentially, this is just how, this is just standard um, syntax. It's basically just looking for, for, for like each two, um, you know, uh, 
it's basically just saying for, for each two numbers that we pass in, it's just saying, hey, is it less than or is it greater than or equal to A, less than or equal to B? Um, and it checks that for each item in the array. So it's and then it's only going to return, it's only going to return the values for where this statement is true. So we don't need to do like return true, return false, return item, whatever. It already knows. It's only going to return items where this statement, this specific statement here is true. So that's just the way this is written. It, it already knows what it's supposed to return. So we don't have to tell it specifically what to return. Okay, so let's pass in, let's see, I think it gave us, um, gave us let array, okay, let me get rid of that comment there, let array equal that, and then let filtered, is filter range that, okay, then we'll console log that result and see what we get for this. Okay, so what we're doing here is we're console logging our new, um, essentially our new result, but then we also want to confirm that the original array has not been modified and still exists, because that's the whole point of this, right? Is that we wanted to preserve the original array um, while also uh, generating the filtered one. So let's, let's run it. Yep, check it out. Yeah, it reduces the most compl complicated of the functional methods. Um, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I felt like the, the 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 example that they gave us in the task here was not a good one for demonstrating it. Um, I actually think I'm really gonna like it, um, and I, I think I kind of get it fundamentally. But the the, the task where we're gonna be using it is not, in my opinion, a very good example. But anyway, we'll get there. Um, yeah, and you can yeah, and you can you can unwrap it and, and see how it goes. Um, yeah, iteration by iteration. Yep. Um, okay, but here for this result, what we got is we can see that we got the filtered array back, and um, but then the also the original array has still been preserved. So we 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 met the conditions of the question, which said we have to keep the original array, and also we have to be able to return the filtered array as well. Yep. So any questions on this one? This one was fairly short, and it really just used the standard, you know, um, just the standard filter function. Now, okay, question. Uh, is array an arbitrary term? Yeah, I mean, we could, we could call this pretty much whatever we wanted, yeah. Um, why wouldn't we use find? We can see that find and filter are listed together here, but pop quiz, why did we use filter and not find? Anybody know? What does find do that's different than filter? Feel free to Google it if you need to. Yeah, yeah, you guys got it. Find only returns the first found item. Exactly. Yes. Yep. Well, so here, um, so, so, um, chemo, so here we're, you know, we are assigning it to filtered. So, you know, we're, we're, we're creating it and then we're, we're calling the function and assigning that array to the variable filtered. Yeah. Yep. But you all are right. Find only returns the first reference. Oh, no, no, you're good. No worries. Um, find, yeah, find only ref re returns the first, so that's why we're using filter, because we want to go through the whole and return all true values, right? So, yeah. Y'all are on the ball. Okay, any other questions on this one before we go to task three? Oop, got to comment it out. I always forget. That's going to be a channel point thing. I don't know. I'm going to have some kind of thing that you can, cheap thing that you can buy that tells me to remember to comment my stuff. <laughs> okay. So task three, um, filter range in place. Okay. So now this is going to be different because now we're going to write a similar function. First try. Yeah. <laughs> now we're going to write a similar function that filters the range in place that actually modifies the original array 
without so it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna destroy the original array and um, you know basically pare it down. Um, so that's probably the the biggest um, component of this. This function should only modify the array. It should not um, return anything differently. So you know it's not gonna we're not gonna return a new array here. Um, okay, so in that case, since we're gonna be modifying the original array. Um, what um, what method might what might we use instead? You don't have to give me the whole statement, but just just what if we're going to be modifying the we want to modify the original array? What method would we use to do that? If we, we can scroll back up on the cheat sheet here and see what what types of methods modify the array itself. Because here we're, at, we're specifically out to do some damage, right? So if you look at that, that for, yeah, dev puddles got it. Splicey splice. Yeah. Yep. Because splice, splice specifically modifies the current array and doesn't return it doesn't 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 uh, uh, it doesn't leave the current array intact it modifies the existing array so and that's specifically what the question is asking us to do so we're going to use splice um, and essentially what we're going to do is we're going to loop through each value in the array by its index and we're going to look and see if it meets the criteria and if it doesn't we're going to delete it because we don't want it in our array if it doesn't meet our criteria. We're very selective. Um, okay, so we've got our array declaration here. And we are gonna say, and we wanted to call this what? We wanna call this filter range in place. And we're gonna pass in these three here. So the same thing we passed in before, we're just performing a slightly different type of operation on it. Okay, so we're gonna loop through each item and we're gonna say um, for let i equals zero, i is less than array.length. Now, you know, you could do um, i less than or equal array array.length minus one, um, but honestly, I just prefer this. I mean, it does the same thing. Um, and I, whoops, I plus plus, I'm gonna increment through the loop. And um, in the solution in the text, they create a another variable there that um, is, is, you know, essentially assigns val to array, dot, or, um, array I. Um, I think for the sake of clarity, I'm going to omit that, and I'm just going to say if um, essentially the value at array index um, i is uh, what is uh, less than a or uh, array the value at index um, i is greater than b now i want to confirm that is this yeah uh-huh okay this is right um because what we're doing here is we're saying we want we only want to delete it if it's um not greater than or equal to a and not less than or equal to b, right? So we could we could do a bang here, and we could do the not statement. Um, either way, um, in this case, we're just saying if it's outside of that range, um, then we are going to essentially um, splice it out. So uh, we're going to do that, and we're going to say array dot splice. Now. What are we going to pass in here? So if we look at the splice, it's right here. What we could possibly pass in are the position, 
the number of items to delete, and then optionally, um, if we want to insert items in their place. In this case, we don't want to insert anything. We're just out to delete stuff, right? So our position for our splice is going to be what? What's what 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 position? If we're looping through each index in the array, what's our current position going to be at any point? Right? When we say position, I mean index. I, yep. Okay. And then obviously we're going to um, only, we only want to delete one item at a time. We don't want to do any more than that. Um, so the, for the folks that said zero, yes, we're going to start at zero, right? That's what we're going to loop through starting at zero. But we're then going to, we want to loop through all the items. If we just put zero here, it would only work for zero. We want, we want to make sure we're looping through all the items and deleting any of the items that don't meet the criteria. Okay. Um, and then in the textbook solution, they also do a decrement on I at, as the very last thing here in this loop. Um, I, I mean, what this is doing is basically saying, well, if we're deleting an item from the array, that's one less item in the array length, right? Um, in this case, I, I mean, I don't think it's entirely necessary. Let's try it without. Um, because anything that's um, outside of the bounds of the um, array length isn't going to meet the criteria anyway, right? It's not going to, it's not going to be valid anyway for comparison. Um, yeah, as, yeah, you're exactly right, Chemo. So this just splices out anything less than A or greater than B, exactly. And so anything, all that's left is going to be everything that meets the criteria that we've been given. Yeah, that I minus minus threw me out. I, yeah, let's try it without, okay? Um, and so I think I've got all my brackets here. I'm just double checking. Um, okay, declare the array. And then do, do, do. Um, well, okay, so the I minus minus puts it at the same spot on the next pass. Um, no, it's not going to because we've removed the element that already existed there. Yeah. It only deletes one item at a time. Yeah, exactly. Um, so that's that second argument in splice there. Essentially, that's just telling it to only delete one item at a time. Yep. And so if we look over here at our little cheat sheet, we can see that um, the things we could pass in are our position. In this case, is I. Um, the delete count. So we could delete more than one item at a time if we wanted to. And then we could also even put things in, we could, we could put things into the gap that we created. We could, we could put something new in there too. I think splice is really cool because it really allows you to do some real slicing and dicing on your array in place, right? Um, but yeah, let's, let's try this now. Um, so, do, do, do. Versatile, indeedy. All right, let's do it without, let's, 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 Let's stress test this a little bit because I want to see you know what that I minus minus if that makes a difference. Um, <laughs> I don't know who that is, but okay, cool. Um, all right, so we're passing in five, three, eight, and one, um, and it should remove everything except one. So we should get back three and one. Okay, and oh, I'm gonna change this to a console log so log all right clear this let's run it yep that's what we got back okay let's make our array a little bigger let's just let's just let's just do this we're gonna do five two three four we're just gonna we're gonna we're gonna put all the numbers in there, and then and zero, the knife guy. Okay, <laughs> must be like an infomercial thing or something. I don't have a TV. I'm out of the loop. All right, so we got two, three, four. Okay, so this is interesting. Look at that. Look what we got. And I was thinking something that like this might happen. Um, so look look at what we got there. We got an eight. 
I think that's why that I minus minus is necessary because I think we get out of whack. Um, I think we get out of whack when we do that. So, so let's think about what happens when we, um, when we delete an element. Um, so in that case, yeah, so in that case, if we start at zero and let's see, so we started at zero, we deleted the five, but we didn't, yeah, we didn't decrement our, um, our I. So it kept going, interesting. So yeah, it did get us out of whack. So we need to reset I. If we delete an element, we need to reset I for it to work properly. Okay, interesting. Yeah, now it works. Yep, so you gotta tell yourself to stay at the current index by decrementing. So the increment at the next loop run keeps you at the same place or traverse the array backwards. Yeah, okay. So in this case, since we're going through the array forwards, um, we need to, the next time we run it, the next time we run it, we don't want to skip, um, we don't want to skip any numbers. So we need to, we need to reset I if we delete an item. Okay, good to know. The count just counted the item, then it deleted the thing. It just counted. Yeah, so it puts us too far ahead, essentially. So, so we, we count, we, 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 we get to that point then we delete the item, and then i is too far in too, i is too far ahead in the array, and so there's the potential for skipping skipping numbers. Yeah. So in this case, what happened is when we ran this earlier, we deleted the six, right? Because it doesn't fit within the bound. Because it doesn't fit fit within the bound, right? And so then our i was too far ahead and it skipped over the eight. So that's what happened there. That's why we got the eight. So we, 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 we got too far ahead in our count. Yeah. Interesting, okay. I was wondering if it might be something like that, but the test case that they gave us wasn't thorough enough to really, to really illustrate that. So that's why I wanted to expand this array to see if that would happen. Yeah, so instead of starting at zero and, increment, and incrementing, you started the array length minus one and decrement. Yeah, yeah, you can absolutely go backwards. Yep. So you do like an I minus minus. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, that one's, that one's kind of cool. Um, I like splice. It can do a lot. Um, I think it's going to be really useful. But do remember, remember, that it's not, it's gonna essentially destroy your original array. So it's gonna, it's gonna do the modifications in place, right? So if you, if you wanna preserve the original array, then you probably shouldn't use it, but it is, looks like a good Swiss army knife. Okay. Any more questions on this before we, it's okay, never like that array anyway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Vampy, there is a lot to remember. Um, and that's, I mean, that's why I literally grabbed this sort of cheat sheet um, from the end of the array methods reading in JavaScript info. I thought, I mean, I'm probably gonna print this out, honestly, um, just to help me remember what each of these do, which ones modify the array in place. Um, you know, I, I feel like this is really, this cheat sheet is really useful. Yeah, I mean, I think they are going to have to go into your Anki individually, um, just because the, you know they are different. They all are. They are all different. Yeah, and it's hard to remember what each of them does. But I like the way that the the, the JavaScript.info put them in kind of like categories, so you can see depending on what you're trying to do, you can see the different things, uh, the different possibilities. Yeah. Okay, so the next one is a sort. Um, so sort in decreasing order. Um, so yeah, I mean, there's not a lot to say here on this one. Let me make sure I didn't, did I just not copy that question or was there just nothing there? Hang on, I'm trying to make sure. Um, yeah, okay, there was nothing there, <laughs> right? There was nothing, there was no other additional caveats. Um, Okay, so sort in decreasing order. All right, well, we just want to sort an array in decreasing order. So what method are we going to use for that? 
what is the method we're going to use to sort our array? Sort. <laughs> Hard question, I know. Real brain bender. Um, so we've got array equals that. So we're just going to say array um, sort. And the standard notation on this is going to be um, just an arrow function. And that's just the standard way to write it. I think you should, you know, should have this notation probably in your Anki. Um, now, if we want to sort something in descending order, um, what are we going to have here to the right of the arrow? What do we want to put here to the right for descending sort? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep, you guys got it. So for descending sort, we do B minus A. Yep. And there was an, there's actually a pretty good explanation on this. Don't ask me to quote it, but there is a pretty good explanation on why this is, why this notation is the way it is um, in the um, array methods reading. I would suggest looking at that again, but it has something to do with comparing each, you know, each two, every two numbers in the array and determining whether the result is positive or negative. Um, and then, you know, performing certain actions based on a positive or negative result. Um, so go and I mean, like I can't articulate it well enough yet, but, but maybe go back and read that. Um, for now, you can just memorize the notation, but let, let's run this. And so we're gonna console log it. Oops, I don't know why it doesn't just console log stuff. It was, all the default code says alert. Console log, console log is a lot easier to see. Okay, console log that. Oops, hang on, I didn't comment, ah! Didn't come out my previous stuff. I always do that. Literally all the time. All right. And again, clear the console. Okay. Yeah, Dev, I agree. Um, and I, when I read it, I was like, ooh, this is clever um, as to what's happening, why that is. Um, and like I say, I, I don't feel like I would do it justice if I tried to articulate it right now. Um, it's one of those things you need to read multiple times and absorb and, and go back and like I need to go back and revisit it again. Um, but I would highly suggest reading up on that explanation because I felt it was really good um, as to why that works for now. I mean, but for this case, you can just you can just yeah, hard to explain exactly, but you can just memorize the notation for now. So we can see what we did here is it's sorting it in descending order. Now, if we just reverse this we'll see that it will sort it the opposite direction. Yep. So this is going to sort it in an ascending order then. Uh, for this one, doesn't array dot sort? Well, okay, so if we don't pass in any arguments, so let's, let's do this. If we don't pass in any arguments at all, we don't, we don't, if we don't have our little interior function there in, within array sort, let's do it. It's going to treat each of the elements in the array as strings and not as numbers. So you got to be really careful with that. So in this case, it does work, but let's, uh, let's do, let's do this. I'm going to do can think of it, uh, another way to format this to fool it a little bit. Let's do, I think if I do this, try that. There was actually an example of this in the reading as well as to why you got to be really careful. Yeah, so look at that. You see what happened there? We've got negative 10, 1, 12, 5, and 8. That doesn't look right at all, right? Now, why did that happen? Because we didn't pass anything in here. So the sort function is just like, okay, whatever. I guess you've just got a whole big array of strings there. So I'm just gonna treat all these as strings. Now it still recognizes the negative there, but then it says, okay, well, this starts with a one and this starts with a one and this starts with a one. So those must be in order. And then we got a five and then we got an eight. Yeah. 
so if we were for trying to yeah it tried it did its best but it sorted them lexicographically it sorted them as words yeah alphabetical by number exactly it sorted them lexicographically instead of as numbers um so we got to make sure we specify we're not trying to sort strings here we got numbers so that's why we do that Yeah, yeah, exactly, Rascal. I mean, it seems so counterintuitive, right? Because you think of sort, like by default, you think of sort as like numbers, not strings. But, you know, hey, is this what they use when you fill their price low to high on shopping? You know what? I would not be surprised um, if that's if, if, you know, if programmers are forgetting that all the time, just like Rascal says. Um, files you save on your computer will sort that way too sometimes. Yes, because file file names are kind of expected to be strings right and so it's going to sort them lexicographically instead of numerically yep exactly you're right so now you know when we when we put that back in it's going to sort just fine if i change this to 12 it's also going to continue to sort it correctly yep there that puts it in the right order yep yeah so i mean that was a really good question and i'm glad you asked that um because it's important to make that distinction. I'm, I'm really glad you asked. And I was actually going to mention that and I forgot. So thank you for asking because that's really, that is something I wanted to touch on. Yep. Okay, next one. Unless anybody had any other questions here. Whoa, years of wondering solved. <laughs> yep. Lexographic versus numeric sort. Exactly. Crazy. Yep. Uh, with learning JS, how long do you got to hang up? Is, is that a question for me? Um, if, if that's a question for me, then I'm learning JavaScript at the same time you guys are. I've never used it before this cohort. Um, I'm a SQL developer. Um, I'm not, I have not touched JavaScript before, so I am learning everything along with you guys and all of its quirks and fun stuff. Um, yep. Yeah, it's a, it's a fun, yeah, it's a fun vocabulary word. That's why I keep repeating it. <laughs> Just like Blah was saying earlier, vocab words are fun. Um, okay, so the next one, copy and sort array. We have an array of strings called R. We'd like to have a sorted copy of it, but keep R unmodified. Okay, so in this case, yep, we don't want to um, ruin the original array. We want to we want to return a new array. Um, create a function copy sorted that returns such a copy. Okay. Yeah, concatenation, right? Lexicographic concatenation, putting words together. That's just a fancy way to say, literally, lexicographic concatenation, we're putting words together. Um, anyway, I could do this all day. Uh, okay, so the next one. So we don't want to, um, we want to return a new array here, right? Now, let's go back to our cheat sheet. Please note, that methods sort, reverse, and splice modify the array itself. Now, we have been told explicitly that we are not allowed to modify the existing array. Mm. Okay. Um, and somebody asked me, where did you get the cheat sheet, MindWolf? Um, so that one is actually in the reading. So if you, go to the, if you go to the reading and you go to the summary, just before the tasks, so like, Right before the task, just click on the summary, and that's li I just copy pasted. That's literally all I did. And then I just put it in the HTML and applied some formatting. So yeah, just grab this, grab this, drop it in your Anki. Like grab each line and put it on an Anki card. That's all you got to do. Yeah. Mutative methods. Yeah. Um, yep. Exactly. And yeah, code words do really help a lot. Uh, just keep doing those 8Q um, ones in code wars and that, that helps a lot. Just hammer this in your brain. But anyway, um, so yeah, we're declaring our array here, but we want to preserve this and we want to um, essentially get a return. We want to return a fresh array while leaving the original one intact. So let's do this. Function copy sorted. R and uh, we're going to we want to return so this function is going to return something right because we're returning a new array so 
array. Now, if we just use sort, that's going to mess us up, right? Because that's going to destroy the original array. What's a way that we could create a new array? Remember, we can chain methods together. What's an array? What's a way that we could maybe maybe chain some methods together and then essentially first create a new array and then sort that one? Uh, yeah, so map, map, perhaps, but with map, we would have to, if we, if we go down here, um, with map, we would have to pass in a function. And here, we don't really want to do any sort of transformations, right? We just want to, we just want to essentially copy, copy the array as is. So, yeah, yeah, um, somebody did slice.sort, exactly. We can just do, we don't have to get fancy with it, we can just say, slice, whoops, slice, which is right here, slice, which literally says it creates a new array and copies in, copies elements from whatever start index we give it until the end. Okay, and if we pass in, if we don't pass in a starter end value, it's just gonna copy the whole thing. So essentially we're just doing control C, control copy, right? And then we're sorting that. We're doing it on the copy. Okay. And so that, that leaves the original in, in that leaves the original intact. So let's do that. Let's test it. All right, so console log so first we're gonna we're gonna um, console log the new one and then we're gonna console log the old one to make sure it's still there um, okay yeah and it's this is this one's gonna sort it alphabetically and okay and in two look here's it this is a really good representation of you notice in the sort, we didn't pass anything in, right? We don't have a function in here because we're sorting strings and it already, it does that by default, right? If you go on Code Wars, you'll see the spread operator, dot, 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 R. Yeah, because <laughs> it's like three characters shorter and you know they like saving characters. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so you could do the, yeah, you could do the spread. Um, that's a fairly new um, thing, and I think it's actually pretty cool. What that does, what spread does is essentially it takes an array and it spreads the array elements in, 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 in like slots each array element into the potential arguments for a function. It's kind of neat. Um, but yeah, I would suggest looking on Code Wars and seeing how that's used. And also the, the MDN has a pretty good article on it as well. Um, but yeah, so let's do that. Let's run it. Oops, hang on. I did it again, you guys. Don't let me do that. Every time, I swear. <laughs> yeah, and, and uh, Rascal is right. The spread operator is indeed, it looks like, it looks like an abbreviation, but it is actually three dots. Yep. Run it all. I got got. Yeah. All right. I'm going to run this. And while that's running, I need to sneeze. I'm going to mute for one second here. Y'all don't want to hear that. Okay. <laughs> don't forget. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So let's look at this. So the first thing we returned was our new array, and we can see that's sorted alphabetically, CSS, HTML, JavaScript, right? But then the second time we returned the original, and we got HTML, JavaScript, and CSS. So the original's still there, but we also have the sorted one as well. <laughs> I think I might blow out the microphone, yeah. Okay, uh, so any questions on this one before we go on? Just did a hydrate.
Okie doke. Uh, okay, you're all good? Okay, good. Good, good. So next one. So I think um, I think we'll do this one. We'll do the calculator because this one's kind of a meaty, meaty example. This one's a this one's a this one's a long one. And then we'll do a little break. I'm trying to be more mindful of that. So I'd give you guys, you know, time to get up and stretch and get a drink and that kind of thing. So we'll do this one. We'll take a break. Hold me to that. If I forget, hold me accountable and remind me. So much appreciated. Um, and plus I get time. To, well, yeah, that's the thing. I, I can set a schedule for the ads. Like it lets me do that, but it's not like I can click a button and just like trigger ads. At least I haven't figured that out how to do that yet. Maybe that's a partner thing because I can set a schedule, but, or I can set it to be random. I can set it to, to play ads at, you know, just like three ads an hour or something like that. But I don't have a, like a deploy ads button that I can click. Um, yeah, I know it's super confusing. Yeah. I'm still getting used to it. So apologies. Um, on that you're probably going to get ads on when you first join the stream until i figure it out um uh and folkman asks how well prepared have you felt having sql experience going into javascript um so sql is not as flexible um as javascript or at least at least classic sql isn't i i use um pl sql and t sql which are the microsoft and oracle versions of sql respectively um those are the ones that I have experience with. There is, of course, the open source version of SQL, which is Postgres. Um, I have not used that. I, I've heard that's more flexible. Um, but the tra more traditional versions of SQL are not. They're, they're far more rigid. So, I mean, JavaScript is certainly way more flexible and way more, in my opinion, more fun. Um, but the overall logic of, like, you know, uh, like, you know, case statements and if else and, um, types of variables, numbers, cars, that kind of thing, strings. Um, those are all very familiar to me. So that does help the basic logic and the basic types of data that you can have. Um, and also I think too, as we get into objects, that's starting to feel more like database structures to me. And like, I think, you know, we'll get into like JSON and stuff like that. Um, I think that's gonna start getting into more of my familiar territory as we go actually farther into it. So it's interesting. There's some stuff that's familiar and some stuff I'm just like, oh my God, I don't understand. So yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting. It does help a little bit. Uh, okay, so calculator. Um, create a constructor function, constructor function um, calculator that creates extendable calculator objects. Oh, hi, Evan, good to have you here. Thanks for coming. Um, the task consists of two parts. First, we're going to implement the method calculates that takes in a string like one plus two in the format number operator number with a space delimited and returns the result. Okay, so we can tell, just thinking about this, we're being told exactly what our delimiter is going to be, right? So we know that we're gonna wanna do, like the, probably the, one of the first operations that we're gonna wanna do on this string is gonna be what? We, we're, we've been given a delimiter, in this case it's a space, so what are we gonna wanna do to that string to break it up into its components? Our, in, into the number, the operator, and the number. Yeah, Dev's got it. Yep, yep. Yep, split, split, split. Yep, yeah, y'all are on the ball. Yeah, Layla, up time, yeah. <laughs> uh, Nathaniel says, I'm guessing you haven't started doing too much functional style JavaScript. Um, this probably shows my, my lack of experience. I'm not even quite sure what you're asking there. Um, but yeah, I'm a JavaScript newbie. Um, I just basically only have prior experience with SQL. Um, yeah, so our uptime, yeah, uh, thanks, Rascal. I had to look there. Um, uptime is uh, just about an hour and 30 minutes. Yeah, I don't have any, um, I don't have any commands built in. I don't have any bots running on my, on my chat yet. So no fancy commands, just usually just Rascal. <laughs> Rascal's my bot at the moment. <laughs> We're all bots, exactly. Um, okay, so yep, y'all, y'all have got it right. We're going to definitely be using split here. Um, it's, and this calculator should understand plus and minus. 
Um, yeah, so if I put in 3 plus 10, 3 plus 7, it should equal 10. So let's do this part first, and then there's a second part that we're going to do, but let's, let's, let's focus on the first part first. Okay. So let me get down here to my notes. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so we've been told that um, it should be called... Um, Our function should be called calculator. Okay, so function, <clears throat> function, calculator. Okay, and uh, so let's start with our split because we know that we 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 want to do that. So inside of our um, um, in, inside of our function, we're going to want to have. Oops, and I can't spell function correctly. Inside of our function, we're going to do some other stuff too, because we're going to want to tell it to basically return, um, figure out what operator is being used, and then perform another operation on that op based on whatever operator has been used. So if I, if I, if if they pass in a plus, we're going to extract that plus sign from the string, and then we're going to say this is a plus sign. Do math on our two numbers and add them together. Right? And if they pass in a minus, we're going to say, this is a minus sign. Perform subtraction on those two numbers. Okay? So um, we're going to say um, cal cal ugh, calculator dot calculate. <laughs> um, and we're going to pass in, we're going to have a function where we pass in a string. And we're going to split our string essentially into an array of three parts. We're going to say, so let's split string equals string dot split. And we're going to split it on the space. Okay, whoops, sorry. Ah, come on. And in this case, um, I may have missed it, but why is calculator calculized? Uh, that's just basically what they um, they said it should be. And so that's, we were told it should be calculated, uh, capitalized. Yeah. Um, and now this case, I'm going to use this sort of slightly shorthand notation. Yeah, it's the function name. Yep, yeah, exactly. Um, so I'm going to use the same notation that, this, that uh, the, the textbook uses, where we're essentially um, t telling the split function what to assign each of the components to. Um, constructors are uh, common practices to make classes with a capital first letter, although there is no explicit rule for it. Yeah, OK, common practice, cool. Um, so if it is a the so we're splitting our string into essentially three component parts, right? Because they told us that everything, all the strings that get passed in are going to have the same format. It's going to be number, operator, number. So all of our arrays are going to have three elements, right? So our indexes are going to be 0, 1, and 2 every single time. They've told us explicitly that all, any of the arguments that are going to get passed in are always going to be number, operator, number. So our indexes are going to be 0, 1, and 2. And so we're going to say A is going to be our first number. So we're going to say split and that's going to be, we're going to assign the first in, uh, element in our array of split, sorry, split string. The first element in our array split string is going to be assigned to A. The next one is going to be assigned to um, operator or op. And it's going to be split string one. And the last one is going to be B. And it's going to be split string two. So essentially what we're doing is we're, we're, we're splitting our, the string into an array 
and then assigning each of the array parts to a variable. Okay, Rascal, yeah, so it makes it easier to see. All right, cool. Okay, so now we've assigned each of these to a variable, but I know that, and now this isn't strictly necessary because JavaScript is, is well, I guess, no, in this case it is necessary. Um, if I try to take a string, split it out into three parts, it's gonna split it out into an array of three strings, right? It's gonna be um, like, you know, a zero in quotes, a plus sign in quotes, and then like a, I don't know, a three in quotes, depending on what we pass in. So in this case, it would, it would split it out into one in quotes, plus in quotes, two in quotes. So three strings, right? Now, if I then tried to perform a mathematical operation on that, which would essentially be, um, it would essentially look like this. And let's say, let's say I, I, I've already converted the plus sign into a, you know, into a valid plus sign, which we're gonna do in a minute. If I tried to do that, what am I gonna get? I try to, yeah, 12, right. Yeah, hey, agent, thank you. Yep, so I need to convert each of my numbers, which I know they're always gonna be numbers, I need to convert them to numbers. Um, so what's an easy way for me to do that? How can, I, how can I turn these into numbers really quickly? Who can, do, who can, who can give me the, the quickest method to do that? Yeah, you're right, Silent, it's gonna, it's gonna yes, we can absolutely use number, yep. What, it, does anybody know a quicker way? Yep, yep, y'all are saying number, which is, that is absolutely a right answer. Yeah, compulsive remembers. Compulsive and rascal, you both remember. Yep, 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 yep. To be even faster, to be even faster than typing the whole word number to save your fingers. We, I mean, we can, we can do this, we can do this. But instead, what we're going to do is just put a plus sign. Badoop. Yep even faster. Yeah, I, re I, I love that one. <laughs> yeah, do that. Do that. <laughs> Magic. Yeah. Okay. Um, so we've parsed that all out. Perfect. Perfect. Um, and let's see, make sure here. And I think there were some, actually, there were some additional restrictions down here at the bottom. No parentheses or complex expressions in this task. The numbers and operator are delimited with exactly one space. And we need to also need to add some error handling as well. <laughs> yeah, and the rascal even knows the, the proper name for it. I'm just calling it the magic plus sign, but um, unary operator, yeah. Um, okay, so we can also add also, you know, now that we've parsed this out into our three components, we can double check and see, make sure that what they've passed in is actually valid. So now that we've done that, we can also say if, um, uh, well, actually to, we need to do something else first. So um, we're gonna, we're gonna do some, so we can check a couple things here. We can say if either thing that they've passed in is not a number. So we've tried to, let's say, you know, we, we, we use the plus sign on this and we've tried to convert it to a number and it can't do it then we, we don't want to, we don't want to try to do any math on it. So we're going to say is not a number, um, or if B is not a number, we don't even want to try to do any math on it. Um, so we'll just return and not do any math. Okay. Um, so that's our that's going to be our error handling that we're going to do. We're checking to make sure that yep. And then the the last thing we do want to check is to see is is what they've is also what they've passed in. Is that a valid operator? I mean, they could pass in like a question mark or something here, right? And then it wouldn't know what to do with that. So we also want to check that. Um, but in order to do that, we need to to declare essentially what are what our valid mathematical operations are going to be. So. Um, Oh, thanks, Deb Yeah, you pro uh, they provided a little bit of a reference there for the unary operator, a little bit more if you want to read about it. Absolutely. It's awesome. Thank you. Um, so 
within our um, within our object here, we can also declare some methods. Um, so we're going to declare our all of our mathematical um, all of our mathematical operations as methods within our object here. Um, so we're going to say calculator dot methods equals and so instead of having to do like a separate calling a separate function to do all the calculations or a separate bunch of separate functions based on what the operator is we can just say um, essentially if it is a plus sign do this so we're going to say we're going to pass in a and b which are our two numbers you know and then pass those in and perform addition on them. A plus B, oops, keep capitalizing things. Um, and then if it's a minus sign, we'll say similar thing, pass in A and B and do subtraction. So what this is gonna do is it's gonna say essentially, um, we're, we're going to write we're going to write um, a little return statement here in a minute. It's going to that's going to parse this out, determine what the operator is, and perform the appropriate calculation based on whether that's a plus or a minus. Um, and this is kind of cool because it's allowing us to combine operations that we might previously have had to have in separate functions before. Are these objects? Yes. Mm -hmm. Ten technically, everything's an object, but. <laughs> Yeah, man, this looks objecty. Yeah, exactly. We're, we're we're kind of blurring the lines here a little bit. Um, we're 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 not strictly confining ourselves to arrays anymore. We're we're mixing arrays and and objects and yeah, exactly. Um, yep, you're right. So we're, we've essentially we've done our error. We've parsed out our string. We've done our error handling. We've declared some methods that we can use. And so after that, we're just going to say. Um, will this video be saved? Um, yes, it will, Brightside. Yeah, exactly. Uh, on my homepage, on my Twitch channel, Brightside, um, you can find my previous Twitch streams. They'll be, they'll be there for up to two weeks. And before those streams expire, I, I'm keeping an eye on them. I, I'm going to leave them out on the, on my Twitch channel as long as I can. And then before they expire, I port them to YouTube and then I post them on the 100 devs, um, threads in house hamilton and women in chat in tech i have i have um like permanent threads there that contain all of my past streams so if you can't find it on my twitch channel it's probably expired look on the 100 devs discord in the um threads for mine wolf streams yeah yeah okay so the last thing we need to do is essentially we need to say all right return um calculator dot method. So we're going to look in the methods and we're going to pass in the operator, right? So we're going to pass in, let's say if, if, if they do one plus three, we're going to pass in the plus sign here and it's going to look inside of our methods and say, oh yeah, here's a plus sign. Now here's what I need to do. Okay. Um, and so we're going to return this and we're going to pass in and um, we're going to pass in A and B. And it's essentially then going to perform this operation here. OK. So I think I'm missing a bracket. No, I think I'm good. Never mind. We'll see. I might be missing a bracket. Hang on. Let me look. Nope. Nope. Okay. Well, let's try it. Okay. Let's try it. So now this should be able to handle plus and minus. Um, so we're going to pass in. Let's pass in. Let's say let calc. And we're going to console log. Uh, 
console log. So essentially what we're doing here is we're saying, okay, in calculator, um, do the calculate <laughs> and then return three plus seven. So let's see if I got this right. There's a lot to this one, so it's very possible I made a mistake. Uh, unexpected identifier, yeah, okay. So let's see what I missed. Not surprised. Okay, I'm gonna go back to my notes here. Expected identifier. Oh, well, no, that looks fine. Do I need to comment out? Oh, yeah, I do. Golly gee. I swear. Jump in Jiminy's. Okay. <laughs> Let's try it again. I might be missing something else too, but that takes care of the obvious thing. Okay, so still not working, but we'll <laughs> run it all. Right? <laughs> Line 131. Let's look, okay, let's look at 131 and see what I'm missing there. I thought I might be missing a bracket or something. Oh, yeah, you're right. Wait, maybe this calc. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're right. I'm missing a bracket. I knew I was. I could feel it. I could feel it. I knew I was missing a bracket. Yep. All right, so let me figure out where I'm putting the end of that bracket. Yeah, missing opening. Yeah. So now that means I'm still missing a bracket then at the end. And yeah, and so I need to put one more down here, I believe. We'll see if this works. Good catch, good catch on that skin puff, thank you. I could feel, I could sense it. I could sense there was a missing bracket somewhere. Calculate is not a function, okay. Cal calculate, let's see what else I'm missing. I think it might have just thing, have things out of order here. Uh, oh, I know what I did. Yeah, okay. That's a long. I think I just got things slightly out of order. Yeah, okay. Let's do this. I'm gonna comment this out. And I'm just, again, I'm going to go back here to my, um, I think I missed, I forgot to copy and paste some stuff from the question. So I missed out on some of the, um, on some of the, let's see, the calc equals new calculator. Actually, no, that is right. Okay. Well, let's figure it out. Calc equals new calculator. I'm going back to the text here and I'm making sure I'm grabbing things properly. Let's see. It's easy to miss something when you're copying and pasting. Alert, calculate, okay, yep. Calc equal new calculator, do that. Calculator dot calculate, and we've got that down here. So that's right. Okay, I think this is still gonna error out. Yeah, it is a function, it's right here. Functions, okay, let's try this. Function methods, all right, I'm gonna use, I was, I was purposely not using this because we haven't, um, we haven't gone over it in class yet, but I'm just gonna substitute this out because I possibly I made a mistake there. All right, let's try this. So I'm gonna use the this keyword yeah. Okay. That worked. Yeah. So I was purposely trying to modify it to make it easier to read, but I'm instead I had to use the, this keyword and what this, what the, this keyword means is it's essentially saying just this method, literally this method and like this function belong to calculator. Okay. So when we say, um, calculator dot calculate, it knows to look inside calculator to find the calculate function. So we haven't gone over that in class, which is why I didn't use it, but turns out I have to. So that's fine. 
Um, as soon as I substituted that out, then it worked. Um, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's fair. Um, so yeah, it looks like it is mandatory. I Yeah, I didn't want to use something we hadn't gone over, but that's okay. We went ahead and used this. Um, yeah, there are a few different ways to do the ES5 classes. Yeah, so we just just use this, so we can you know we can clearly see it's inside of our calculator, and so inside when you're you know when you're um, declaring different little you know sub functions and that kind of thing, different objects, you can use this dot whatever to to join it inside of your calculator. Yeah. All right, so we've done our plus and minus, right? Um, so now we can add additional methods to do additional types of calculation. So the next part of this question is add the, meth add the method, add method, name, function. So we need to add a new, um, f uh, essentially, we need to add a new method um, inside of our calculator that teaches the calculator a new operation. It takes the operator name and the two argument function, function a, b, that implements it. Okay. So we want to add, in this case, we want to add multiplication, division, and exponent power. Um, so here's how we can do it. We are essentially just going to say, again, we're going to use this. Um, let me make sure I get it in the right spot here. So return this, and then below that, I want to say, um, oh, hang on, I'm going to get my brackets messed up, I know I am. Uh, after that, we do this, okay, there we go. So I'm going to say this dot um, add method, that's what it needs to be called, um, equals function name. And funct and again, this is just basically what they told us to do, right? So, add method, pass in name and function, and we say this dot. And so we're adding it to the methods list, right? We're adding it. We want to add a method to the methods list up here. So we want to add it to this dot methods. Just add it to this list. This dot methods. We're passing in the name, right? Because the index of our new item should be like like these two up here, plus minus, so that way we can just we can just go straight to that index if we need to. This method's name equals this method name is going to be our index equals function. So this is confusing, but let's run it and see what happens. Okay, I think the rest of my brackets are good. Okay. We'll see if I'm missing anything else. All right, let's do the first one. So we'll say let power calc is calculator, and we're just we just want to add multiplication to our calculator. Let's try that. And I'm gonna comment this out. Comment this out. And. We're going to add that, and then I'm also I'm going to perform a um, a new calculation here. So we're going to say um, let result equal power calc dot calculate, um, and we'll say pass in the string um, three space times space six. Okay, so we should theoretically. After we, after we add the the calculate the uh, multiplication method, we should now be able to perform mul multiplication. So let's see if we can. Okay, let's try it. Oh, I didn't <laughs> I didn't console log it. Hang on. Log. Yeah, <laughs> you're right. You got it. <gasps> Console log result. Okay. Didn't error out though, so that's good. Yeah, there we go. So what that tells us is that it successfully added the method. And let, let's walk through this, right? So 
we've added the method. So now essentially what that looks like is we said power calc, add method. And then so what that's going to do is it's going to run this add method method. Really, that gets confusing, doesn't it? And it, we're, we're, we're passing in. We're passing in the um, the star as the name, okay, and the function, which is this right here that I have highlighted, we're passing that in as the function, okay. So we're passing in two things here: name, which is the star, and func, which is this whole statement here. That's the operation that we want to perform. Okay, and then we're taking that name and we're adding it to the methods list where the star becomes the index for the method and then the function becomes the operation that we perform. Oh, yeah, we can, yeah, we'll, we'll try that in just a second. Yeah, we'll, con we'll console log it and see what it all contains. Yeah, absolutely. Um, good idea. So, and then, so what we've done then is we said, all right, we're going we're gonna to add it to the method list. So what that should look like is essentially um, star, you know, colon, oops, sorry, um, colon, and then multiplication. So that's, it'll just add it to the method list like that. Now, um, I'm going to back this out and then yeah we'll try to console log it and see if we can get it um, okay so we'll just go down here and we'll say console log uh, should just be power we'll see if I can just power log uh, console log power count I don't know yeah whoa okay it doesn't uh, it doesn't look very good but we should be able to at least find it in there. Uh, yikes. So I want to actually, hang on. I want to do, return power calc dot methods. Yeah, I can try console table, yeah. Let's see if I can do this, power calc dot methods. Yeah, there we go. That's what I wanted. That looks better. Um, so all I want, really wanted to see was the methods, right? So now after we ran that um, add method, you know, after, after we ran add method, we can see that it properly added multiplication as one of the available methods. Yeah. Pretty cool, huh? So, so we know that's working. And then we can also add other additional methods that way too. So, yeah. Um, so they also wanted us to add um, division and exponents. So we will, we already did this one, take that out. And actually, no, I'm just gonna do all three. Let's see. I'm curious to see what'll happen. If it'll, Okay. Well, it didn't it didn't it didn't squawk at me. So now again, I'm gonna I should have left that there. I'm gonna console log um, calculator dot or sorry power calc power calc dot methods right? Yeah, power calc dot methods. Okay. Run. Let's see what we got now. Yeah. So what was interesting there is that even though I said, you know, add this, um, it technically already existed. And so it didn't try to, you know, I, I was curious to see what would happen if I tried to add it again and it already existed. Um, interesting. So it, it didn't let me do that. That's nice. I'm glad it works that way. No error because it technically isn't added yet when the, 
If you comment them, they won't show up on the next run, I think. Okay, yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Page, yeah, okay, page, yeah. Technically isn't added yet when the page reloads. Okay, if you comment them, they won't show up on the next run. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, interesting. So now let's do some X, let's do an exponential operation here. So come on this, and we're gonna console log the results. Okay, clear this. Yep, so that gave us the, the correct result. Two to the power of three is eight. So it worked. So this one, this one is, this one's pretty intense. And this is one of those ones that's just like, it was like a super hard question, like straight out of the blue with like no lead up pretty much. Um, so I wouldn't expect you to, to like, you know, know exactly how to do this one right off the bat. It's more of just here's exploring, you know, what, you know, these, these types of objects can, can contain and can do for you. Um, we, and we just started touching on this stuff. So, you know, we're going to get way deeper into it. Um, might, you might have skipped it. <laughs> hey, there's no harm in that. This one was, this one was way out, kind of out of left field compared to some of the other stuff. Eloquent JS style question. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so this one was just kind of fun to work through. And, and like, I, I probably, I, I was not able to do this one like at all right off the bat. Um, I got completely on the wrong track when I was trying to do it just because I wasn't thinking, I don't have that mindset yet in thinking in terms of, you know, building these types of really complicated objects and that kind of thing. So, um, yeah, this was definitely me looking at the solution, looking through it, figuring out how it worked and going off of the solution. So there's no harm, like Leon keeps saying, there's no harm in looking at the solution if it helps you learn and, and get some new ideas. So, yeah. And yeah, no problem at all. And me talking through it with you guys, me being forced to explain it to you guys means that I have to at least have a decent understanding of what it's doing. So that helps me learn too, because I got to think ahead and I got to be like, okay, I, I need to be able to, to explain this in a co coherent manner to all of you guys on the stream, right? So it forces me to have a level of understanding, which is good for me as well. Yeah, Vampy, um, I absolutely believe this is, this is the start of the kind of things we're going to be doing from now on. Um, really actually, you know, programming stuff versus just doing simple operations. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Free spaced repetition. You're right. Yeah. We are your Anki. You guys kind of are, honestly. <laughs> yeah. Yep, yep. Yeah, and we'll definitely get there. Yep, you are you guys are right. Um, uh, Dev, you're, you're absolutely right. We will get there. This is just a first taste of it, right? Okay, so with that being said, this was a really hard one. Um, let's take a break. Um, it's 10 o'clock. Let's take a break, and then we will keep going, okay? Um, so I am going to put five minutes on the clock. I think it's, uh, I think five minutes should be enough. I'm going to put five minutes on the clock, go, you know, get a drink, let your dog out. Um, and, um, you know, use the restroom and then we'll come back. Okay. So one second, let me get a timer going here. Um, five minute timer and it's already started. Hang on. Reset. Okay, and three, two, one, go. Five minutes on the clock. See you in a minute. Walk the goldfish, that's right.
Alrighty, welcome back, welcome back. You still got 15 seconds if you're hurrying back. Um, go ahead and stop this before it beeps at us. Okay, I gotta say, I am, uh, I'm jealous of, uh, you know, folks in Europe and the UK that have those, you know, higher voltage outlets. Um, Cause here in the, here in the US, like I love to make tea and I use a tea kettle to, to make my tea and boil my water. And man, it just takes so long for it to heat up at those, you know, with my low po lower power outlets. Over in the UK, when I was over there, man, their tea kettles were like, you know, nuclear powered. They would just like boil water and, you know, just whoosh is great. But here in the US, it takes several minutes for, for my tea kettle to, to get to a boil. So I barely have time to make a fresh cup of tea in that five minutes. Ah, oh, boy. Okay, hope everybody's back. Um, might have lost a few people there. That's fine. We got to be healthy. Got to take breaks. And if you um, finally got an electric kettle, yeah, right? I love my electric kettle. I found my electric kettle in a dumpster, actually, of all things. I live in an area where there's a lot of folks that, um, a lot of students that, that, that um, come to the local college, um, you know, may not be able to carry everything <laughs> spicy mine over <laughs> and tea kettles yeah um so we got a lot of a lot of folks that come and they maybe only stay for a semester or two and they can't carry a lot of things home with them so um they tend to just kind of you know they try to give things away or they'll just leave things you know by the dumpsters and stuff like that end of semester it, darn right absolutely i have no shame I'm, I'm going around to the dumpsters and i'm i'm getting new brand new stuff still in the boxes so that's how i got my my tea kettle uh found it Found it by the dumpster, still in the box. Um, it's, it's an $80, $80 tea kettle. Um, yeah, which is wild. <laughs> Less things going to the landfill, absolutely. Yep, yep, yep. And I know the, they, they, they always feel good. Those, those folks always feel good when they can give their, their, their stuff to somebody. I moved into my first apartment here. Um, in the area and somebody across the hall was having to leave you know they were they were here for just for a semester or two and they they dumped a bunch of stuff by my door just like hey take this stuff so it was really great yeah yep $80 tea kettle yep wild wild I'm getting the use out of it certainly um okay looks like we got a few more folks back so we'll go ahead and get started again um all right so we did our calculator that wild and crazy thing um, let's comment it out. I'm going to, while I'm thinking about it, I'm going to comment it out. And, okay. And we did our additional, we did those parts of it too. Ooh, Butterbean Rumba. That's an awesome name. I love it. Okay. So question seven, map to names. Um, Okay, for this one, uh, we have an array of user objects. Okay, so yeah, again, we're combining we're combining you know the the newer concept of objects with the slightly simple concept of arrays. So we have an array of user objects. Each one, each object, has user dot name. So there's there's a name embedded inside the object. Um, write the code that converts it into an array of names. So if we look at this, we have John, Pete, and Mary, and then each of these objects has a name and an age associated with them, okay. And then we have an array of our users, John, Pete, and Mary, and so then we want, what we want this to return is we want it to say, okay, I'm gonna look for John, and, and, and inside John, I'm going to grab this name, which is a capital John, and I'm going to return that. And then in Pete, I'm going to look inside Pete, and I'm going to return the name of Pete. And then in Mary, again, I'm going to say, okay, find Mary, there's Mary, return the name Mary. Okay, so... This is going to kind of be similar if we if we remember um, we kind of just did something like this in the in the calculator a little bit a little bit more um, um, comp a little bit more complicated but we you know we were able to look essentially at um, 
within an array, we were able to get an item from an array, match it with an object, and return something from inside that object. So um, in this case, though, we also want to map that output to an array, right? Because it says write the code that converts it into an array of names. Um, so essentially what we want to do is we want to go over this array. We want to, we want to go through each item in, the, in this array, um, grab the name and map it to a new array. Ooh, I said it. No, <laughs> I was trying not to, I was trying not to say the keyword, but I just gave it away. So what are we going to do? Um, what are we going to do to go over our users array? And what, what, what method can we use to then create a new array to, to basically perform a function on this array and then create a new array? I gave you a freebie there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Rascal said GPS. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. So we're going to map it because what we want to do is we want to go over this entire array through each item in this array, map quest. Yeah, exactly. I'm gonna go over each item in this array and we're gonna perform a function on each item. And that function is essentially just gonna be, look up this item and grab users dot, or sorry, I, or like um, uh, object dot name or whatever. Um, so we're gonna say, we're gonna call and we're gonna call our new array. We'll just call it names. So let names, because remember, map by its very nature, map returns an array, right? Map says the, the definition of map creates a new array from the result of calling a function for every element in an existing array. Okay, so that's literally the, what we're doing is literally the definition of map. Um, so we're going to say users dot map. And then what do we want to do to that? We were going to pass in each array item and we are going to return item dot name. Okay. So we're going to pass in John, right? And we're going to return John dot name, which is uppercase John. Um, so that's all there is to that. And we'll say console.log. And we'll lo we're logging names. Okay. I'm going to clear this and run it. Yep. And so we get back John, Pete, and Mary. And I mean, these could be anything, right? We could do console, uh, we could do item.age, right? We, and that would return the ages for each one. Yeah. 25, 30, and 28. Yeah. So, <laughs> thought it would be harder. <laughs> yeah, that's a good explanation there, Rascal. Um, another way to think of map as a transformation method and you pass it a function that does the transformation. Yes, exactly. Um, fits better if map is stuck in your head as an object like key value mapping of things. Um, yeah. And so that's a, yeah, that's a really good description. So yeah, with mapping, we're taking in an array, we're performing a function on it. That's going to transform each item in that array into something else. And then we're spitting out, you know, we're, we're, we're spitting out a new array that has been transformed by that function, right? Creates a new array from the result of calling a function for every element in, I want to say, in an existing array at the end of that. Yeah. Yeah, nope. This one, we just use map and we call a function on it and return um, whatever item we want from here. Yep. So after the last one, I know this feels almost like a letdown. Like, really? <laughs> That's it? <laughs> That's it. But part of it is just knowing when to use this stuff, right? And that's, that's, that's almost the hard part is, is figuring out, well, yeah, I mean, obviously this looks simple now, but um, it's just knowing, the hard part is knowing when to apply this stuff. And I can't say that I'm, you know, 
hundred percent on when all this stuff needs to be applied either. Right. Um, that's part of the challenge is, is there, we've got so many different methods here that we could potentially use. Um, but in this case, we can look under the section of, to, so what do we want to do? We want to transform and return something else. So map seems like the best choice to use here. Yeah. Now, I think that'll just come with time. That's why we're doing this all. That's why we're doing all this, right? Just, you get it in your, we'll get it in our heads eventually. And, okay, so we did that. Now we're going to uh, map to objects. So we have an array of user objects. Each one has a name, surname, and ID. And for those who don't know, uh, surname is just last name. That's, it's just another way of saying last name. Um, write the code to generate another array from it of objects with ID and full name. So the difference here is that instead of returning just a regular array, we're returning an object, a yeah, thank you, a list of objects with ID and full name where full name is generated from name and surname. So they give us an example of um, essentially what the output should look like. Um, users map should be, should look like this. So we take in for example, we take in John, which has the first name, last name, and an ID, and then we return essentially the full name, John Smith, with an ID of one. Yeah, yeah, so we are going to be doing some um, concatenation here. Um, and but it doesn't have to be super, again, this one doesn't have to be super complicated. So let's go ahead and get these uncommented here. Okay, so we got John, Pete, and Mary, and we've got our array here. We've got users, John, Pete, and Mary. Um, and again, we're gonna use the map function again here. So, cause I mean, it literally tells us we're mapping, right? So we're gonna, we're obviously gonna use map. So we're gonna say let users mapped, um, equal and again we're going to say users whoops users dot map um and this time instead of like so if we were just trying to return an array right we would just like for the for the previous one we basically just said um users dot map take in an item and return item.age. Now in this case, we want to return a full object. So we're going to take in a single user and we're going to return a full object. Oh yeah, no problem, big bada boom. Glad you had a good time. Yeah, feel free to finish up the VOD later. And I understand these streams go long, right? I don't expect you all to stay for the whole time. Um, that's what VODs are for. Um, I can go for the long haul, but I understand that not everybody can. And, you know, other folks have got obligations and that kind of thing. So if you got to drop off, don't worry about it in the slightest. You can catch up on the VOD. And, um, yeah, I'm, I'm sure you, I'll see you all around next time. So no worries. Um, but, yeah, so now we want to return a full object. Um, so we would want to do something like, um, you know, bracket, um, and then essentially we just want to return like full name and we want to concatenate the user dot name, um, and the user dot surname, right? So in order to do that, we can just use the backtick notation and combine those two. So we can just say user dot name. We don't have to use like a concatenate method or anything like that. Um, we can do user dot name and then just a space and then um, user dot surname and do that. And that'll just combine those into one uh, full name. And then we also still want to return the ID just as is, no modification needed there. So we just return user.id 
and then this is going to put it into a new object called users mapped. Now, let's try to run this. I'm expecting to encounter a problem. So, but let's see what happens. I'm expecting things to go awry. And we'll see why here in a minute. So, if I run this, Theoretically, it should return one because the first item in users mapped, um, basically users mapped whatever is at index zero dot ID. I would expect that to be this item here, and I would expect it to return an ID of one. So if everything went to plan, I would end up with this. And actually, no, you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to console log, um, console log users mapped first thing okay let's run this yeah so it doesn't like that um and that's kind of what i expected um and we'll see why here in a second now let's see did i put that did i note that down I didn't put that in the notes. Hang on. So there's a really good note about that in over here in the actual text. Um, map to objects. There's a, yeah. So it literally says so you need to map one array of an object to another. Try using an arrow function here. There's a small catch. Yeah. So the catch. We can look at the solution here. Please note that in the arrow functions, we need to use additional brackets. We can't write it like this, which is the way that I just wrote it. We can't write it with just a plain bracket and still return that object. Um, so JavaScript is trying to treat that bracket as the start of the function body, not as the start of the object. So let, let's look at that again. So if, if JavaScript is reading this as a function, it would expect that this bracket is just noting the start of the function body, right? Because if, if I was writing a function, I would enclose that the expression in brackets, right? But what I'm really trying to say here is that this is the start of an object because objects are also included in brackets. So it's a little bit of an overlap there, right? Um, so what we need to do is this and just put additional parentheses there. Now let's see if that works. Um, Might still have a problem. Nope, there we go. Okay, so let's see what we got. Yep. So we got our full name, John Smith, ID of one, um, Pete Hunt, ID of two, and Mary Key, ID of three. So yep, at once as soon as we added those parentheses there, our JavaScript said, oh, okay, you didn't mean this was the function body you meant it to actually be an object that is going to be returned by our function. Okay. Um, so yeah, that's just one of those, that's just a weird little quirky thing in that, you know, function body and object are, have the same type of bracket. So a little catch there, just something to be aware of. Again, maybe not something you'll remember, but you might, you might, this might, if you encounter this later, you might think, oh yeah, wait, I've seen this before. Something like this happened before, what was it? And then you might remember. Um, so yeah, that worked. We got what we expected. Um, so now I can say, I can run our two little test cases here. I could say console log users mapped zero dot ID, which you would expect to return one. And then I'm also gonna run console log users mapped zero full name. So I expect to get one and John Smith out of this. On that. Yep, and we get one and John Smith. Yay. So that worked as expected. Once we fix that, that little quirk with the brackets. Okay. So these two questions, these last two questions here, number seven and number eight, they kind of go together, right? We're performing a similar operation on both. Um, the main difference is 
that the first one is we're, we're mapping to essentially like a single, um, a single component within an object, right? We're, we're, the first one, we just map to a single component within an object. And then the second one, we're mapping the entire object. We're, we're essentially creating, you know, a new, a full new object out of it. So I would suggest maybe looking at these two questions, when you, when you go to review this again, look at these two questions together, see how they're the same and see how they're different, um, and maybe mess around with them a little bit, because these two questions are definitely two peas in a pod, both using the map function to do slightly different things. Or map method, I'm sorry, both using the map method to do slightly different things. Yeah, there's definitely a kata somewhere in Code Wars waiting to trick us with this. Absolutely, I am sure. Absolutely sure. Yep. Okay. Any questions on this one before we move on? Or on these last, I would say these last two since they go together. So the map to name and map to um, object. Okay. Um, so next one, sort users by age. Write the function sort by age, and we're going to pass in users. Um, oh, hey, good to see you, Arapassion. Um, came in super late. Think you might have to watch everything from the beginning. Oh, yeah, no problem. Um, yeah, feel free to catch the VOD. It's available on my Twitch channel. Um, yeah, grab it anytime. Um, and yeah, thanks for stopping by. Um, all right, so we're going to sort users by age. We're passing in users to a function that sort by age. It gets an array of objects with the age property and then sorts them by age. So we're passing in an array of objects that have an age property, okay? And then we're sorting them by their age property. Okay, so we're getting John, so we have the uh, John object, the Pete object, and the Mary object. And we can see that they have an age property associated with them. So then what we want to do is we want to sort, we want to grab this age property out of those objects and sort by it. So, whoops. Okay, so then we're going to call that function sort by age array. And then it's going to return we expect it to return John, Mary, and Pete because that's the order in which their ages go. Okay, so when we're thinking about this, do we remember, let, let's, let's keep it simple. How would I sort in ascending order? Can anybody tell me, just, let's say I had an array of numbers. Just forget the object, forget their, their objects. Just think of an array of numbers. How would I sort an array of numbers in ascending order. Can anybody give me the full um, the full method for that? Yep. Can can anyone, I'm going to challenge you guys here a little bit. Can anybody give me the full? If I pass an array called a r r r, if I pass an array called r, what would be the full method for sorting it? A minus B is correct. That was, that's what we're going to have on the right side of our arrow function. But can anybody give me the full? Yeah. Yep, Ryan's got it. Um, well, that, that would be the descending. That would be descending order. Yeah. Um, but if we're going to sort in ascending order, essentially we just have the reverse, right? We would do um, array or R dot sort, um, A comma B. Yep. Yep, Jack Tree, you've got it. Good job. Good job, everybody. Y'all had the components. I just wanted to challenge you there a little bit to, to see if you could write out the full method. Um, but yeah, you, you, you guys got it. So um, we're going we're gonna to declare a function here. Function. We're going to call it sort by age. Oh, no. Hey, that's a problem. No problem. No problem at all. Um... And we're going to do, we're, then we're, we're passing in 
uh, an array called r. So we're going to say r.sort. And just like you guys said, we're going to do a comma b. And, um, and like you guys said, on the right side of that arrow function, we're going to do a minus b. Now, this would work if I just had a plain array of numbers, right? If I was passing in a plain array of numbers, I could perform this sort function as is, and it would work as expected. But I am passing in, instead, I'm passing in an array of objects. So if I specifically want to return, or if I specifically want to perform this on the age property, what can I say here to, sp to make sure it specifically knows I am looking for the age property? Yes, yep, Ryan, you're right. So what we're going to do is we're going to say a dot age, b dot age, right? Because that's saying, that's saying, hey, okay, look at John, but we need to go a little bit deeper and we need to look within John for the age property and get that. Versus just if I had just said a here, it would just look for John and it would say, I can't sort John. I, I, I can't do it. So let's, let's, let's try that here. Let's leave, let's say we forgot to, we just pasted this in and we said, oh, we're done. Let's see what happens when we try to run it. Okay. Let's see if I comment. Yeah, I did come out the previous thing. Cool. All right, let's run it. Let's get wild. Oh, and I didn't log it either. Whoops. <laughs> So I always, I've been forgetting to do that too. All right, we're going to console log. Let's see what we get back. Yeah, that's not right. <laughs> so essentially what it did, right, is it didn't even, it couldn't, it couldn't do it. It, 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 it was unable to sort it, so it just returned you know, this is what a, this is what was first in the array before, so it just returned, it didn't, it, it couldn't sort it, it left it as is. Yeah, so I'm gonna console, actually, I'm just gonna console log, um, and what, what I expect to see is it's still gonna be in the same order. It didn't, it couldn't sort it. Oh, it did get the objects, but I think it's gonna, yeah, it kept them in the same order. Yeah, yep. Couldn't sort them, kept them in the same order. So what we need to do is we need to grab the age property and then it will know what to do with that. So then it'll be able to sort that. Now let's do it again. I'm going to console log r dot, we're going to console log r dot uh, name. Do that. Oop. Didn't like that. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Boop. Yeah. I want it to return John. Now, the, the first thing in the array now should be John. Yep. There we go. So that's as expected. And now if I return the second one and the third one, I should get exactly what I expect. So we'll just do all three. John, Mary, Pete. Okay. Does that make sense what we did there? Um, we took the sort function that we already know, and we just told it to drill down into each item and find that age properly property specifically, right? Because we know that's a number and it can sort that. Okay? Any questions on this one? I'm going to take a hydrate. All right. Let's see. So the next one is, and we're going to be shuffling an array. Okay. This one is interesting. Um, so we're supposed to write a function called shuffle, 
that shuffles or randomly reorders elements of the array. Uh, multiple runs of shuffle may lead to different orders of elements. So you run it a few different times, it could return you know, different permutations of the same array. Um, okay. So there's various different ways to do this. Um, and the text actually kind of goes into a pretty long explanation um, of the different ways to do it. it f so it, it, it mentions like the first and most obvious one is probably using the math.random um, function that we already know. Um, and, you know, doing the sort on math.random and, and returning that. But apparently, based on um, the, just the way that JavaScript is, um, the sorting function is not meant to be used this way and not all permutations have the same probability. So this is not true randomness. So using the math.random function with sort um, won't return a truly random result. And they, and they do a little bit of, of fact checking here to show you that. So of all the different possible permutations of an array consisting of um, the three numbers, one, two, and three, we can see that the, the count of each result really varies widely with um, the permutation one, two, three, and two, one, three occurring twice as often as the other permutations. Um, so it's not truly random, which is really interesting. So there's a clear bias for one, two, three, and two, one, three. And it says the result of the code may vary between JavaScript engines, um, but the approach is unreliable. Okay, so in the end, um, it gives some explanation there. But it, in the end, it actually suggests a specific um, type of shuffle that we can use. Um, this is kind of touches on what Rascal mentioned earlier and walking through the array in reverse order. Um, and, and walking through the array in reverse and then performing the operations that way. So let's do that. So we're going to do the Fisher, Fisher Yates shuffle on this bad boy. Okay. So we're going to say function shuffle, and we're going to pass in our array, and we're going to loop through it in reverse order. So um, just like Rascal mentioned earlier, we're going to start at i um, equal the array dot length minus one. And OK, pop quiz, um, quick repetition here. Um, I have my equal sign in the wrong place. Hang on. Why, why do we start at array dot length minus one? Can anybody tell me? Why do we start here? Anybody know? I know it's late. We're going to see if your brain still works. Yep, we're going backwards. Yes. But why wouldn't we start at array dot length? I did know I forgot. That's why. That's why we're going over this again. I thought. I thought there might be some. Uh, this is. Yeah. This is one of those. It's. It's a deep cut. Um, yeah. Yep. 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 And Folkman, you've got it. Um, starts at zero. Yep. 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 You guys have got it. Yeah. 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 Um, and that's right. That's because arrays. Remember, arrays are zero indexed. So the length. The length. The value returned by array dot length is going to be one more than where the indexes are going to end. Yeah. Yeah, index starts at zero, length starts at one. Exactly, Vampy. Yep. So that's just a quick reminder of why we do that. Um, it's important to, to review the why every once in a while. You can remember you can remember how it's supposed to look, but it's also important to remember the why there. Um, so we are targeting the last element here. Yeah, we're going backwards. Um, is the way this this shuffle is is um, constructed, and then we're going to decrement as we go through. So we're starting at the end, and and then <laughs> no no that's fine. <laughs> oh thanks Ryan and uh, congratulations Vampy. 
We got a tier one sub. I'm afraid I don't really have any um, tier one rewards for those folks that have subscribed at tier one. I, I don't have any special rewards for you, but um, other than thank you very much. Um, I will get some going. I'm just not there yet. Um, all right, so for the shuffle, we're gonna declare a new variable uh, and we're gonna essentially set this as our randomizer here. So we're gonna use that random function. I'm gonna say math.random to generate a random number and we're going to multiply it by i plus 1. And then what we're going to do after that is we're essentially going to, you don't have to completely understand how this works, but we're going to use, um, we're going to deconstruct, we're going to use some array deconstruction. And for those of you that, um, let's see, which one did we use this? For before we used this for one of the previous JavaScript homeworks. Uh, oh yeah, we used it for the variable swap um, as a one-line solution to the variable sw swap question. In like in uh, in uh, what was it? I think it was the JS way homework. Yeah. Um, so what this does is it takes in one array and. It essentially then re and then it swaps the assignments for each one. So it's a de destructuring, array destructuring. Array J and array I. Yeah. Okay. So um, what we're doing here is we're essentially grabbing a random element and we're swapping it with a random element from, and we're swapping it with an element from the other. So we're taking something from the latter half of the array and we're swapping it with another element from the first half of the array. So we're, it's, like we're, it's like we're shuffling the card deck. Um, and so we're, we're, we're we're, we're shuffling our deck of cards in a more even manner than just using a randomizer alone. So on top of that randomizer, we're adding an additional shuffle of swapping earlier segments of the array with latter segments of the array um, to create a more even distribution. And we can see that if we run this shuffle, um, inception, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, and so, yeah, the idea is to walk the array in the reverse order. So that's what we're doing. We're, we're looping in reverse order and swap each element with a random one before it. Yeah, so it's not necessarily in the first half of the array, but essentially what we're doing is we're, we're going through the array in reverse order and we're continually swapping the current element at the, so we're, we're swapping the, the current element at the end of the array with a random element from a previously in the array. Yeah. So our J is going to be a random index. Our J value is a random index from zero to I, and we just keep swapping over and over again. And so they do some, the, some proofs down here, and they show now if we run the, the permutations again using the Fisher-Yates shuffle, we get almost an equal probability of every single permutation. Yeah. And Folkman, yeah, I mean, I, I have, I have experience some experience with data systems. Like I say, my day job is a SQL developer. Um, I don't have any formal background in computer science. Um, so I don't know a lot of the theory and stuff like that. Um, I, all my experience, literally all of my experience has been on the job learning. Um, so I'm, I have big gaps in my knowledge as far as theory. Um, but you know, you pick stuff up. Uh, and it also says, you know, performance wise, the Fisher Yates algorithm is much better. There's no sorting overhead. So. Not something you necessarily have to know, just an interesting little exercise in randomization. Yeah. So if you ever have to randomize an array, this is a good way to do it. <laughs> I wouldn't say, I wouldn't necessarily say to put this on your Anki. You might maybe just remember the name Fisher Yates. Um, if you, you know, you could put on your Anki a card saying something like, what's the best way to randomize an array? and then have the answer just be Fisher Yates shuffle. And then that's something you could easily Google um, and find it again if you need it. So I wouldn't necessarily memorize this whole thing. 
I would probably just say, how can I get a truly, you know, true randomization of an array? Fisher Yates Shuffle and Google that. Uh, do I keep a code snippet file? Um, I, I mean, I have like a code pen where I store some stuff. Um, I'm not super organized about that, but I do keep, you know, I keep all my, my VS code exercises and stuff like that. Mostly, you know, I keep them mostly in code pen. Um, so I can go back and I keep them, I have them by date and I'll just go back and reference them if I need them again. Yeah. I could probably be more organized about that, but yeah, and I Google a lot. <laughs> okay, so next one, um, get average age. So we're gonna write a function, get average age, and we're gonna pass in a list of users that gets an array of objects with property age and returns the average age. So this sounds familiar, right? We've done this before. We've passed in an array of names and we have returned the age before, right? We sorted by age. So we already know how to do the basic part of getting the age property out of an object, right? We know that. And now we are just expected to return the average. And they give us the formula for average. So the formula for the average is each of the ages added together and then divided by n, which is essentially the number of ages, the, the count of ages that we've just added. So simple average function. Um, so let's see how we can do that. All right. Um, now, in this case, let's think about what we're doing. We're essentially starting at zero and we're iterating through the array and we're taking the first age and we're adding the second age and we're keeping a running total as we go and we're, we're stacking each age and we got a running total and for, and for each running total, we add each additional age to it. So does anybody know if I want to keep a running total going and essentially work across an entire array, does anybody know what we should use? I mentioned this very briefly earlier. We'll see if, if anybody catches it. If not, we can look, we'll, we'll look down through our cheat sheet and see we can, if we can figure out which one we should use. Hmm, what do we want to do? Ah, Dev's quick on the draw there. Yes, we're going to use the infamous reduce. Yeah, because what do we want to do? We want to calculate a single value over the array by calling a function for each element and passing an intermediate result between the calls. Now, this is a very complicated way to explain it, but essentially what, it, what we want to do is we want to calculate a single value which is a running total. So in this case, we want to keep a sum. We want to keep that, we want to calculate that sum and keep adding to it as we go through the entire array, right? Because that's what an average is. That's what, that's the, the, the numerator of our average is age one plus age two plus age three plus age four, blah, 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 blah. And we want to hold that value and then divide it by the number of elements in the array. Okay. Yeah, so we're gonna use reduce here. Um, this, is, this is a decent application of reduce, I would say, because it kind of fits the definition. That's so specific. Yeah, well, it doesn't have to be a sum. Um, it's really just, just cal it, performing any kind of calculation to, to, to go over the whole array and, and reduce it down to a single value. My <laughs> God, that's Jason Ford. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. Okay. Yeah. All right. So we got John, Pete, and Mary, just like before. And we've got our array. So essentially what we want to do is we want to go in and we want to grab this 25, add it to the 30, add it to the 29, hold that total throughout. We don't want to lose that total. We're going to hold the total 
and we're going to divide it by three. Okay. Is reduce always numbers? No, that's a good question. I don't know. Anybody know? Does it have to be numbers? Does the operation have to be um, numeric or can it be um, done on strings as well? Oh, that's right. No, it isn't because we have another question later that's not numbers. Yeah. Nope, you're right. Of course. It can be done on other things as well, like objects. Yep, you're right. Gen and enemy is right. Yeah, so we're gonna in the end we're gonna alert essentially this. Uh, well, actually we're not gonna alert it, we're gonna console log it. Yep. Okay, so let's do this. And we're gonna say our function is gonna be git average age. And we're going to pass in users and we're going to return users dot reduce and let's look at reduce um, so let's see what we pass in so we pass in um, we pass in a function and an initial value so we can tell we can tell, we can give reduce a, a, a value to start at. Um, it doesn't have to be zero. Um, in this case, it is gonna be zero because we, we wanna start, if we're doing the average, we, we just wanna start at zero and, and add from there. But it's, it is interesting that we could potentially pass in a value other than zero. In this case, no, we're, we're gonna pass in zero. Um, but so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna, we're gonna have our function. So um, our running total is gonna be, um, we could call it anything. We'll call it uh, previous, and then we're going to pass in user as well. And we're going to say so previous is going to be our running total plus user dot age. So for, we're going to grab each A's and add it to the previous total, and then our initial value is going to be zero. Um, and then we're gonna divide. If I wanna get the number of elements in an array or the count of elements in an array, what would I say here? How do I, how do I get the, 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 the total count of the number of elements in an array? Uh-huh, yeah. Users dot length, uh-huh. Okay, so Let's see, did that, got my closing bracket. Okay, and we declared everything, got the array. Okay, let's try it. Oh, oh. <laughs> what did I not do? Let's see, did I not, uh... John has already been declared. Okay, what did I forget? Ah, <laughs> And again. Okay. <laughs> someday, someday I'll be better. Okay. There we go. And that's the expected result. So we got 25 plus 30 plus 29 divided by three is 28. Um, and so let's pause for just a second and let's look at reduce over here in the, um, in the documentation. So I'm going to search for this. Uh, reduce, yeah. So let's just look at reduce really quickly. Um, let's look at how it's put together. So inside of reduce, I don't know if you guys can see that. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. There we go. Um, inside of reduce, we have a function right and what do we pass in so that that function is going to can we can pass in the following items we can pass in an accumulator which in this case i would just call it the running total right so that's the the running total that we're going to keep adding to for as we loop through each item in the array so we're going to pass in we can pass in the accumulator item index or array 
So in this case, what we're doing in our version of the problem is we're passing in um, previous is acting as our accumulator and user is essentially um, acting as our, like that's acting as our item. So we're gonna say um, we're passing in our accumulator and then for each item, we're grabbing the age and we're adding it back to our running total in the, that's held in previous. So I just want to be clear that previous here is acting as our accumulator. Okay. Any questions on this one? And that like this is standard syntax for the reduce method. I know that this uh, reduce is kind of wild, but it's good. I just I just like to think of it as like just it's just a it's just it's just helping us calculate a running total is all it's doing. It's accumulate helping us accumulate values. Kind of get it. Yeah, and that's fine. I mean, I kind of get it too. I don't, I'm not. I'm not fully there yet, but um, kind of getting it is not is better than not getting it at all, right? And we'll just we'll 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 um, we'll accumulate all of those kindas until we finally get until we finally get a a, a, a total, right? Yeah, better than yesterday, and that's all you can ask for. Yeah, I get it with numbers, but the strings throw me off. Yeah, absolutely. That's understandable. Strong pun game. That's right. Why else do you tune in? <laughs> okay. So, yeah, so just, we can just, you know, try writing this, look at the, look back at the definition, see how all the elements fit together. Um, you always have Google, yeah. <laughs> Hi, Dan. Good to see ya. Yep, Google is your friend. And in this case, actually the explanation um, in, the, in the text is pretty good. Um, and you, you can look at this explanation, see if that helps you. If it doesn't help you, you know, look for another, a different explanation on MDN or W3 um, and just, just, you know, Keep reading people's different people's explanations and see find one that see if you can find one that clicks for you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so we're almost done. Let's go on to number twelve here. So now we're gonna filter unique array members. So this is a slightly different kind of question than than what we've been doing for the last few questions. So we had a little bit of a change of pace here. Um, so we're going to say, let R be an array, create a function, create a function unique. We're going to pass in an array and it should return an array with only the unique items of the array that we've passed in. So we're going to get a different array back with the unique items from R. Oh, Nicholas there has a suggestion for the previous question. Uh, you could do console log prev comma item inside the reduce to see how it goes. Yeah, yeah, you could, you can, that way you can keep track of your running total for each, for each um, iteration to see whether it's behaving the way you expect. Yeah, that's a good idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you could console log inside of it. Yep, inside of that function. Mm-hmm. Okay, so in this one, we're gonna, we want to return an array with only the unique, unique items of R. So we, if we pass in this array with a bunch of Hare Krishnas, um, we should, it should only return one Hare, one Krishna, and then the, the, the whatever this is, <laughs> surprised face at the end there. Um, yep, so let's do that. Uncomment this. Do that. I'm gonna. In the end, we want to console log this instead. Old school emotes. Yeah, right. <laughs> Back in the day, 
before all these fancies emojis with all these all these kids nowadays with their emojis they didn't know how hard we had it trying to to build complex faces out of ascii symbols only right they didn't know our struggle um okay so function unique um So first, let's just set up an empty array. Flip phone. <laughs> Careful before we all start revealing our ages. Yeah. I already revealed my age on a previous stream. So if you, if you really want to know, you can go digging and, uh, and find where I, where I printed it out. I printed out my age in a console log if anybody wants to know it. Um, <laughs> for such a selection of faces, we had to hold down multiple keys. Yeah, right? Uh, had to exercise those fingers. Okay, so what we want to do here, um, what's a way that we can search through an array? So let, let's look at our cheat sheet over here. Um, what's an array that we can, what's a way that we can look through an array and return so, so figure out if, if essentially we want to check and see if this array, if result already includes the item that we are looking at in this array, right? So let's think about it. If I'm looping through, I'm looping through the, my strings here, right? So the first time I go around, I return hare. Okay, well, result doesn't have hare in it yet, so I'm going to add hare to my array. And the second time, I'm going to look and I'm going to see Krishna. Okay, it's not in there. I'm going to add Krishna. Now the next time I'm going to look, I'm going to see Hare again. I want to see if result already has Hare in it. And if it does, then I want to not add it. So what's a way I could do that? What's a method I could use to do that? I love everybody's little reminiscing about uh, about uh, the early 2000s uh, tech life. Very nice. Or an end before, yeah. <laughs> include, yeah. Uh, and Ryan, yep, Ryan's got it. Dev's got it. Yep. We're going to use include. Um, yeah, this is, this is a tough question. Um, so... Um, In this case, I think the, the, so we have, you know, we're kind of under the category here on our cheat sheet of searching among elements. Um, and in this case, we're going to go ahead and use include um, because we, we're just, we just want to check and see for, for each time we loop through our strings array, we're going to check it against our result array to see if whatever item we're looking at already exists in result. Okay. Um, so let's write this out and we'll, it'll make more sense when, once we're looking at it. So we're going to loop through our strings array. So we're going to say for, we're going to use the, this um, lovely uh, for loop that we, uh, this, this sort of permutation of the for loop that we can use on arrays. So we're going to say for each string in our array, if something, we're gonna, I'm, I'm not going to fill this in yet. We're going to say if something, then we're going to add that string to our result array. Okay. So if, essentially we want to say if whatever item we're looking at, doesn't already exist in our result set, we want to add it, right? So if I'm looking at my, if I'm looking at my string array and I, I'm, let's say I'm on item, I'm on the first item here, well, result is empty. So I want to go ahead and add hare to my result. I look at the second item. I don't see Krishna in my result set, so I'm going to go ahead and add it. Now, when I get to this item, 
Hare is already present in my result set, so I don't want to add it. So in that case, I'm going to say, we're going to use include. We're going to say result dot includes whatever item we're looking at. But I want to say if result does not include whatever item we're looking at, then add it to the result set. Okay, so, so let's think about how that works. Um, so I'm looking at hare, and I say result.includes string, reverse that. So that'll result in me adding hare to my result. <laughs> Um, the second one, he'll have the same outcome. The third one, I'm going to say result.includes string. Now this will return true because hare is already present in my result set. Result.includes string returns true. I then negate that with my bang here. So we get a false, so it'll skip that. And it'll do the same thing for the rest of the array. So let's run this. I'm going to say return result. And I should get my list of unique strings. Yep. Okay, so does this make sense? This one's kind of this one's kind of a brain bender, but let me know if you, if you need me to go through it again. It's kind of hard to explain as well because there, there's a lot of um, repeating of terminology, but I couldn't figure this one out, but seeing it written now makes sense. Okay, good. Glad it helped a little bit. It's kind of, like I say, it's kind of a hard one to talk through, but essentially for each element in our strings away, array, right, we're checking to see, does it already exist in our result set? And if it doesn't, then add it, we're using the push method. If it does already exist, then don't do anything and go to the next one. Yeah, Champo, no problem. Um, okay, so this is a for loop, right? So we know what that does. It's gonna look at every single element in our strings array, right? Because we're passing in, we're passing in our strings array into our function. And so it's going to look at every single element in our strings array. It's going to look at Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari, um, and it's going to check and see. Uh, we have an, and we we start out with an empty result set, an empty array, and each for each loop. It's going to check the result set to see if it already includes whatever item we're looking at. So for the first item, again, remember, our result set starts out empty. For the first time, we're looking at Hare. Okay, so what's the result of that? So, Champo, can you tell me, um, this is either going to return this right here. Look at what I'm highlighting. Forget about the bang for now. Forget about that. What would this what would this return? True or false? If I'm looking at the first item. Result dot includes hare. Right, exactly. Yes. Yep, compulsive, you're right. So what we what we're doing there is but so we want to say now, if the result doesn't include hare, we want to add it to our array. So that's why we added the bang here. Because this, this, this returns false as written. But we want to say, if whatever we're looking at is not in our result set, we want to add it to the result set, right? We want to add hare to our result set. So we add the bang to make it reverse. So now this is true. So now I'm pushing hare to my result set. And we do the same thing for Krishna. Now, let's look at the next hare. 
So now I say result.includes hare again. And now we look at the result and it says result.includes hare, yes. Result now does include hare because it's the very first thing we added. So that means I don't want to push hare to our array again because it's already there. So I'm using the bang to reverse it. So now I skip this, I skip the push, and I go to the next one. Yeah, it's pretty wild, huh? Uh, Dev asks, could it be done as a one-liner using for each? Maybe, yeah, you could try it. I'm probably, I'm not gonna do it right now, but um, you could absolutely try it. Yeah, Champo, um, it, yeah, like I say, it's a hard one to think through. You might try um, just messing with, with this function a little bit, like taking away the bang and seeing what you get, um, and then putting the bang back, or maybe doing, a, you could do a console log um, on, you know, on some of these and see what you get for each result. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the if check, yep, essentially that's a good summary. The if check makes sure that we don't add duplicates to the result array. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's what it's doing. It's making sure that we aren't adding any duplicates. Yeah. It looks like for each can't be cascaded or chained. Okay. Fair enough. Okay, so the last question, create keyed object from array. Um, okay, so this one's kind of interesting. They, um, well, I'll get it, we'll, we'll get into it first and then, um, oh. yeah, it is a lot, it's a lot to take in. Yeah, I know. That's why I wanted to really, that's why I decided to go over this one, um, this homework. Because I know we had a lot of homework, but I felt like it was, um, I felt like it was the best one to review together because this is kind of our main focus right now in class. Um, no, you're fine, Chopo. I, I got, I got your meaning. Um, okay. So, last question. Let's say we received an array of users in the form of ID, name, and age. Create a function group by ID that creates uh, that takes in an array um, that creates an object from it with ID as the key and array items as values. Okay, so ID is the key and array items are the values. So here's our example. We're gonna let users. We have an ID with a name and an age. Okay. Um, and then we're gonna run our group by ID and we're gonna, then it's gonna spit out um, a new object essentially. So, so we're gonna run our function and then what we, want, what we wanna end up with is a new object called users by ID Actually, I'm not going to uncomment that, but it's going to be, it's going to have um, the, the ID value that was previously inside the array now as the um, ID value for our object. Um, and I, the ID is going to be the key value. Oh, yeah. Using for each stuck with a bug. Uh, yeah, it's so it's always so annoying when you get like undefined and you're like, but where is it even coming from? You know? Yeah, it's hard to find sometimes. This is a mighty wall of tasks. <laughs> Do you Oh, I, I remember to comment out. Yes, thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah. I did, didn't I? <laughs> Good for me. Um Okay, so we want to take in, essentially we, we want to take in this and we want to get out this. Now, when we say key, I'm not sure everybody knows what a key value is. So essentially a key value is just a unique identifier 
for, you know, in, in, if we're talking databases, it would be the unique identifier for a row in a table. Um, so if I, if I say, if I query for that key, I know that I would only ever get back the one particular row that's associated with that key. I would not get back two rows. I would get back the one row that's associated with that key. Um, all right, if it's a primary key. Um, and so in this case, that's essentially what we're doing here. We're saying, hey, John is the singular identifier. It's like, you know, it's like the index value for, um, within this object. It's the, the index value for this row here, for all this information here, ID, name, and age. And it will only ever be associated with this information right here. Um, same with Anne and Pete. And it says such, such function is really handy when working with server data. That's true. Um, in this task, we assume that the ID is unique. Yep. There may be no true array items with the same ID. Yeah. So that's what we're trying to do here is we're trying to create a unique identifier that we could easily, you know, say like users by ID dot John and get back all this information. Um, and they tell us, please use array dot reduce method in the solution. So they want us to use reduce to solve this. Now, there's quicker ways to solve it, but they, they want us to use reduce. So that's what we're going to do. Okay. With all that being said, let's do it using reduce. I think this is just to demonstrate the versatility of reduce. Um, yeah. Anyway, I'm not a huge fan, but <laughs> work with what we're given. Okay. Uh, so we're going to say function group by ID. And we're going to pass in our array and we're going to return um, array.reduce. And remember, um, what do we, so the, whatever function we make, we can pass in a certain, t certain number of type of arguments, right? So we have a function in, in our reduce method. We have a function and then inside that we have an accumulator, an item, an index, or an array. So we're always definitely always going to want to have an accumulator. And in this case, our accumulator is going to be the object that we're trying to create. Okay. So because that's the output that we want in the end. We want an object. Um, and the next thing we're going to pass in is going to be the item. So the array item. So it's going to be, uh, I mean, we could call it item if we wanted. Um, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll say value. That's what they call it in the solution. Um, and so what are we getting out of that? We want to say for um, each for uh, inside of our new object, the index. What did we say? What did we say that we want the key field to be inside of our new object? What did we want the key field to be? What, what did the question say our key field needed to be inside of our new object? ID. Yeah. Yep. 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 You guys got it. So it's going to be value.id. That's, that's going to be the index inside of our new object. Um, and we're going to set that equal to value. Cause what are we, what are we passing in? We're passing in, um, so our, our, we have our accumulator, which is going to be object. And then we're passing in, uh, where'd it go? 
we're passing in our values, um, which are going to be John and Pete. And we're going to, then we're going to return, once we're done doing all of our accumulation, we're going to return the object. And also too, remember in reduce, when we're using the re reduce function, let's look back at it again. We've, we've done the, we've done the stuff for the function that we need to pass in, done this, but what else do we need? If I'm, if I'm making a, if I'm using the reduce method, what else do I need along with the function that I'm passing in? What's the other thing that I need? So we've done, we've done all the things that I've highlighted there, but looking at this structure, what else do I need that I'm missing? Initial value, yep, Deb's got it. We also need an initial value. So what I'm gonna do is since, you know, if I, if I was doing this like we did before where I was doing a running total summing up numbers, I, would, I could put in zero for starters. But since we're using it on an object, I'm gonna put in an empty object, which is just empty brackets. A place to start, yeah, exactly. So in this case, our place to start is just gonna be an empty object, which is double brackets. And I think if you did the array cardio, I think he did something like this where he started out, you know, we start out with an empty object and you, you're adding to it as you go. Um, I need to do that one again. That was like one of the first ones I did, so I don't really remember, but I think um, I was planning on doing it again. And I think he did something like that where he started with an empty object and then added to it as he went. Yeah. Uh, okay, so let's try this. And what we would expect to get out of this is, again, a new object. Um, which looks basically like this. So and then I'm, I'm going to run this and then I'm going to console log. Um, group by ID. Wait, that's the function. I want to, what did my uh, users by ID? There we go. Oh, hey, Ethan, thank you. Yeah, well, and I have a bunch of other videos too. Um, if you're on the 100 Devs um, Discord, you can go to House Hamilton um, and look at the pin threads at the top. Uh, it's like a little hashtag symbol. Um, you can click on that and up there, you can see all of my past streams more than just the floats video. Um, so those, little, those are all my older streams. They're available as YouTube videos and if you wanna see more recent streams, you can look at my Twitch channel homepage. Just click on my username here and you can see my more recent VODs on Twitch. So yeah, good to have you, Ethan. Thanks for coming. Uh, okay, so let's see what we get. Oh, group by ID is not defined. What did I do? Uh, uh, it's, oh yeah, capitalization, <laughs> gotta love it, yeah, good catch guys, all right, try it again, there we go, okay, so now look, we can see that our new object now has the ID essentially as the key field, right? So there we go. So compared to the previous array, which just had these items in it as array, um, as array elements, now we have objects with the, the, the ID as the key field inside the object. Yeah. Now, Let's do this again a different way that's maybe a little simpler. Um, and essentially, yeah, after the call, this is what we have. Um, let's do it again, not using reduce. I mean, I, I can see what they were going for here. They're trying to show us that you can use reduce to perform operations that aren't just numeric, so like more than a running total. Essentially, this is kind of like a running total. We're just adding items to an object as we go. Um, but let's do it a little differently. So instead, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna say group by array. 
using a hammer to open a can. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's do this differently. We'll say, again, we're gonna say let result. This time we're gonna just basically, we're gonna declare an empty object, okay? And we're gonna use for each. For each. And our function is gonna be kind of similar to what we set up top. For each, we're gonna pass in, you know, for each item in our array, um, for each item. Uh, we want to, again, inside of our result set, oops, sorry, we want the new index value to be the ID, and then return the item associated with that ID. But, uh, yeah. For me, that's a lot easier to follow. Because essentially, it's it's kind of similar to the calculator that we did earlier. Do you remember the um, the add method function that we wrote for our calculator earlier? Go when you're um, when you're looking at this later. Go back and look at that. Um, and it's basically that's basically what we did, right? Is when we added a new method to our calculator, we said here's here's what we here's what we want to add to our result. We want to add a thing at a certain index. And that index is going to be the ID of the item. Way better, yeah. The, the index is going to be the item.id, okay? And then we want to associate then the rest of the item with that, um, with that value at the index. Yeah. So we'll get the same result. It's just cleaner. So let's log it. And I'm gonna get rid of this one. Oh, uh, no, I need that. Okay, yeah, all right, that's fine. We'll run it. Console on, yeah, okay. Should be fine. Yeah. Let's see, oh, I must have messed up something here. Undefined, theoretically it does work, but, oh, I missed a parenthesis, I think, hang on. Uh, oh. Yeah, okay, I see what I did. I, I put array up here and then I type, I just, I, and then I said R down here. So let's try that again. It's late, I'm making mistakes. Yeah, there we go, that worked. So this is, to me, this is a lot easier to follow, um, but I'm sure, you know, that it was more of just showing how reduce can be used for things other than numbers, um, but this is much cleaner. Hey, good morning. Yeah, it's nearly midnight here. Good to have you. Gonna have to remind myself about using reduce. Yeah, and I mean, I don't know. I, I could see myself using it primarily for numbers for now, just because it makes more sense. Um, but I mean, yeah, it can be used for other things. I'm not sure that you should. Like, like Rascal said earlier, it, you know, it's, it's like a hammer and, you know, when you have a hammer, you can make anything look like a nail. Um, that doesn't mean you should. <laughs> Gonna watch this about 50 more times. Yeah. <laughs> That's what VODs are for. Um, he's good. <laughs> I don't want to start a flame war <laughs> in the chats. <laughs> uh, all coasts are best coasts. I'm, I'm, I'm in the middle of podunk nowhere in the Midwest, so... About anywhere is better than here. <laughs> yeah, it has its charms. Um, okay, so yeah, essentially this is the condensed version and we're just using a nice clean for each loop and we're creating the new um, index and item inside of our result set, inside of our result object. And then returning that and that's what we get. Uh, Okay, well, that was the last item. So that, there's 13 tasks in this, which, you know, is no small feat to get through. Um, <laughs> oh, you learned about floats? Awesome, yeah. Uh, I was just telling someone earlier, that you can find the rest of my videos um, in, th in a thread in House Hamilton. 
Um, if you just go up to the top, look at the thread, look at the pin threads um, that are, or the just the threads at the top of the channel. Um, you can find my videos there. I, I keep updating the list and adding more. And you can find additional videos on the homepage of my Twitch channel. Um, there's some additional VODs there. So just keep an eye on both of those locations and you'll be able to see all my videos about various topics. Um, this was the hardest yet. Yeah, um, I, and I think some of the, 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 the javascript.info, um, like the, this, this, this manuscript, some of the, it's, and some of the ways that things were written were kind of made it difficult too. Um, some of the questions were kind of worded confusingly. Um, I think what'll, what'll be the best practice is just doing more code wars. Um, again, I would suggest grab this cheat sheet Grab this cheat sheet from the from the um, from the summary in the in the JavaScript.info. I think this is the most useful thing right here. Is just grab this whole thing and you know put each item in your Anki. And I would maybe reword some of these definitions to make them more clear. Um, and you know just grab this, practice code wars, um, and and keep doing the more simple, straightforward problems. Um, and I think that would be the best way that I would approach it. Probably, these were these were these were definitely difficult. I it was interesting, you know, um, like the uh, JS way exercises. I didn't think were nearly as hard as as this. Um, yeah, cardio race seemed easier. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm glad this was helpful for you folks. Um, feel free to rewatch. You know, that's what VODs are for. Um, Making sure I didn't miss anything here. Just need more practice. Absolutely. That's why we're doing this, right? That's why I'm doing this. It's practice. We're getting familiar. We're getting familiar with the syntax. Um, starting to memorize this stuff. Did done did it. <laughs> yeah, go back through the VOD later. This is the hardest assignment. <laughs> Oh, hated CSS until I watched your video. Spent more time on back-ended databases. Yeah, well, hey, me too. Um, yeah, I, I am, my day job, I am a SQL developer, so I spend all my time on back-end databases, no front-end at all. Um, so I had to find my own ways of, and I also have um, uh, a slight spatial impairment, uh, impairment, so I have a hard time determining size and distance. Um, and so I have to, like those methods that I described in my, in my floats video, I have to use those in order to figure out how to position things. Otherwise I can't do it. Um, so that was built out of necessity essentially. And I'm glad it's been very helpful for folks. Um, yeah, let's see. Eloquent JS, JS info, JS way hardest to easiest. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Eloquent JS. This the eloquent JS this time around was bonkers, man. I don't even know. That's why I didn't. I didn't even want to bother talking about that one. Um, just because, like, I don't even feel like it's really relevant to the level that we're currently at. Um, I think it was still good to do, um, but I, <laughs> it was way above. I think where we're at currently in our discussions of arrays and objects. Um, yeah, uh, Daiwa, you, you're welcome to ask questions. That's fine. Uh, and Dion, you are you suggested an extension, um, Quaka.js. It helps when you're just working with JavaScript. It shows what you are console logging in VS Code without needing to open up a web browser. Oh, okay, very nice. Yeah. I'm doing mine in uh, in CodePen just for for these streams, just in case I need to share it later. Um, in this case, I'm not going to share this one because the solutions. Well, I mean, I, no, I can share it. There's no harm in that. But I probably won't share it until after the homework is due, um, just because I feel like I don't want to. The homework's technically not due until tomorrow, um, but I'll share the link um, after then. Um, while practicing <laughs> increment learning, yeah, absolutely, Ryan. Yep. And uh, yeah, thank you for the, thank you for the uh, suggestion about the extension of Quokka.js. Um, the graph of the pizzas and squirrels did me in in Eloquent.js. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, totally. Yeah, Rascal, that's a great, that's a, that's something I wanted to mention too. As you guys are doing Code Wars, um, 
consider taking the problem. If you if you if you're butting your head up against a problem, you keep getting errors and it keeps failing the tests. Um, consider taking it out of the Code Wars browser and dropping it into VS Code and doing your own tests there. Or or what I like to do is drop yeah is essentially drop it into VS Code but run it in the browser, run it in Chrome because Chrome has better debugging then, you know, Chrome has really good debugging because you can click on, you know, when you get an error, you can click on the exact line and it'll take you to the exact line that is erroring out. So that saved me many a time with the Code Wars problems is doing my debugging in the Chrome console um, and getting really great feedback on where the problems are. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> more comments on eloquent JavaScript and how weird that was. Yeah, it was very weird. Um, when a cookbook writer and a programmer make a book equals eloquent JavaScript. <laughs> yeah, Lejo, um, you're welcome. And uh, yeah, I hope you have a great evening. Go, yeah, go diffuse and, and take a nap and uh, cement those ideas in your brain. Two biggest problem with code pen is when you're sure your code is right, but it doesn't pass. Are you talking about code wars, Deanne? Yeah. You just want to flip over your table. <laughs> I'm a teacher far behind um, since the last three weeks. Is it possible to catch up in two to three days by watching all the VODs? And I'm feeling good in JavaScript until data, up until data types. Um, so, Dion, I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't rush yourself, right? Like, don't, don't force yourself to catch up when you really don't have to. There's some, there's a channel in the Discord called the Catch Up Crew, and those are those folks are all at different points in their journey but you know none of them are are necessarily current with the classes um and i i i mean i i wouldn't force it um because you really want to be able to understand the stuff right um and it's i mean i and i don't know that i could tell you 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 could catch up in two to three days it just i don't because i don't know exactly what level you're at um, and two, I, I don't think it's, you know, we know from the, if you've taken the Coursera course, course, learning how to learn, we know that cramming, and when I say cramming, I mean like studying, you know, 23 hours a day and, and, and packing in as much information as you possibly can just by watching the VODs, that's really not going to help you learn it. It's like you have to observe it and then practice it yourself. And I think two to three days is not enough time to practice all the concepts that we've done in the last three weeks. Um, that's just my opinion. Of course, everyone is different. Um, if you, maybe you're the kind of person that can just see something once and just absorb it. In that case, go for it. Um, I would say don't worry about being part of the catch-up crew and, and maybe join in that community and, and, you know, share your questions there. Just my, my two cents. Ryan, you're taking the slow simmer reduce approach with reduce. Yeah, of course. I think the more times we see it applied, um, the more comfortable we'll get with it. Yeah. I'm just treating it like 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 a running total generator. Yeah. It's probably it's probably too simplistic, but gotta go fast. <laughs> not necessarily, not in this case. You know, when you, for learning it's it's all about you know like Leon keeps saying, you know, keep testing yourself, keep doing the code wars, figuring out what, you know, what your deficiencies are, um, and just, just repeat, repeat, repeat. Oh yeah, Rascal, the, the, those great, uh, yeah, Rascal, man, big, big props to Rascal for, for doing, you know, Rascal and Miss Mar, um, were invaluable in my earlier streams before I was on Twitch. They did all the editing, all the timestamps, all that crazy, crazy hard stuff. Spent hours on it. So much love. Has anyone else been really stubborn and not listened to Leon's 20 minute rule on Code Wars and keep trying to solve the problem? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I guess I've gone over on a few of them. Um, I would say it's just what, you know, managing your level of frustration, right? If, if you start to get, I would say 20 minutes would be about the threshold where I would start to get overwhelmingly kind of frustrated with myself. And that's not a good, that's not a good mentality to have. Um, and so at that point, you know, I, I mean, I don't time it exactly, but I, it, once I start to get 
frustrated and like annoyed with myself, then I just say, all right, I'm going to cut this one, look at the solution, study it until I get it. And so that way I won't have to feel frustrated next time. Um, so it just depends on your level of tolerance for that kind of feeling. Yeah. Yeah. And like I say, I mean, I'm not a, I'm not an expert in learning. Um, and I'm not a teacher. Um, and so I can't, I don't, I don't know the psychology, you know, I'm, I'm just a person, right. And you're different than me and I'm different than you. So you, you know, your levels of tolerance and, and your ability to learn. So, you know, best of luck with whatever you decide to do. Exactly. Yeah. Ryan. Yep. We are learning and we're not competing. There's folks that are joining, rejo- you know, there's folks that are joining the cohort for the first time now, um, just getting into it, just still, just starting out. I, you know, Daiwa, my one suggestion would be check out the Catch Up Crew channel um, on Discord. Just go to that channel, check in there, and you'll find folks that are at all different levels. And hopefully you'll be able to find some folks that are exactly at the point where you're at, and maybe you can progress forward together with them. Uh, I've stopped looking at them and left and gone back if I think I'm close, but I generally try to stick to the 20 minute rule. Yeah. And yeah, that's a good, that's a good suggestion too. You can walk away, um, for a few minutes, go brush your teeth, go get a drink of water, um, go outside for a minute. And sometimes that's all it takes to, 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 to get your brain thinking in a different direction. I do that with stuff at work too. If I'm stuck on something, I'll just get up and walk away for a minute. And sometimes that's all it takes to, to get it, you get it, you know, jog loose in your brain (laughs) so any other questions before we wrap up for the evening yeah isn't that wild absolutely we've come so far from the beginning we didn't even know how to make a website in html in the beginning right i certainly didn't so i mean SQL is like, you know, like SQL that I use for my day job, it's very powerful when working with databases, but it's really not good for much else. It's not like JavaScript where you can use it for lots of different things. Um, And so I didn't really have any um, knowledge of the wider world of programming and other applications. Um, I didn't know how to do a website. I hadn't the slightest clue. I didn't even do MySpace stuff when I, you know, I didn't have enough internet in my house to do any sort of MySpace or Neopets, you know, HTML stuff. Um, so all this is very new to me. And so it's, yeah, it's wild to think of where we were just at the beginning of the year versus now. So give yourself a pat on the back for that. Are you mainly a T-SQL person? Um, I've done both T-SQL and I'm currently, for my current job, I use PL-SQL, which is the Oracle version. Um, they're both very similar. It's kind of like British English versus American English, like mostly similar. It's easy to translate between the two, but there's some key differences that can trip you up. Um, if you're not looking, uh, have you worked with Postgres? I no, I have not. I've only ever worked with T-SQL and PL-SQL. So I'm eager to look, you know, when we get to that point in the course, I'm eager to learn about Postgres and see what else can do for you. Yeah. And, uh, you know, yeah. Great to have you all here. Um, if you got to drop off, feel free. Um, I appreciate having you all. Um, and I hope you got a lot out of the stream. Um, feel free to catch the VOD. Um, and yeah, I'm happy to stick around a little bit and answer any additional questions anybody has. Um, could you make video quality option a little bit lower? Only 1080p available. Yeah. So that's the thing. Um, my previous videos were in 720p. Um, and it did make things kind of blurry. Um, if before everybody drops off, um, I mean, so, so I tried, I'm experimenting with 1080p tonight. Unfortunately, because I'm just an affiliate and I'm not a partner, I can't, uh, the Twitch apparently doesn't allow you to make different video quality options available when you're only an affiliate and not a partner. Um, so yeah, I mean, I wish I could. I, what do you guys think next for the next stream before everybody drops off? What do you guys think? I should do should I should I stay at 1080p or should I go back down to 720 I'm ambivalent either way I don't want to I don't want to exclude people just because you know my stream rate is too high for their internet um, connection go to 4k I, I can't <laughs> uh, yeah and somebody asked about the run button um, in code pen you can go to settings um, and you can say behavior and you can turn off the auto updating. That's what I would do. 
When you're working in the console, turn off auto updating and that'll give you the run button. And I could try next time too, I could try going down to, I could, so I'm right now, I'm, I'm at, uh, I set it to 30 FPS. I could go down to 15 um, FPS. We could try that next time. So, you know, a lower frame rate um, and see if that works better for folks. I would love to stay at 1080p if I could, just because it's so much clearer. Um, like, especially when you get to the YouTube videos and stuff like that. Um, when I ported my oldest stream to YouTube, it was so blurry just because it was at 720. Um, I, I might try, uh, next time we'll try going down to 15 FPS and see if that works better for folks. Yeah. We'll, we'll try 15 FPS next time and see how that goes. Maybe that'll be better. Um, let's see, I missed something here. Um, have you ever dabbled in other database paradigms other than relational databases? Um, no, I have not. Um, so I mentioned earlier, I don't have any kind of formal CS training or background. I kind of stumbled into SQL um, after I graduated from college. Um, and so my entire career, I've only ever worked with SQL um, and strictly in relational databases. Um, so I have a pretty, I've had a pretty narrow career path so far. I mean, it's gotten me to the senior developer level, but that's partially why I'm doing this cohort is that I felt like my field was too narrow, just out of circumstance. Um, and so I wanted to do this cohort to broaden my knowledge of coding in general. Yeah. Yeah, no problem. Good to, good to see you, Kimo. Oh, no, no problem, Matt Aran. I mentioned it way earlier, so it's probably, I mean, this stream is four hours long, so it's probably before you joined. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I could be, I could have been, a, I could have stayed a one-trick pony and, and stayed, you know, in my little, in my little lane and probably been just fine, but I felt like I owed it to myself to keep learning. Um, I feel like no matter how far you get in your career, no matter how successful you are, it's good to always be learning because you never know when the next opportunity is going to present itself. Yeah, tech's always evolving, always got to be learning. Absolutely. <laughs> Thanks, Ryan. <laughs> Much appreciated. Yeah, we're going to start dabbling in databases eventually and we'll get toward the back end, which I'm more familiar with. Yep, absolutely. But I'm like I say, there's a lot to learn. I have a lot of gaps in my knowledge just based on my background and, and lack of uh, formal theory education. Um, so yeah, there's going to be a lot to learn for me as well. Tech stack. Um, yeah. Also get more money. Yep. That, <laughs> that's a wonderful side effect. <laughs> I, yeah, I'm actually not really looking for a new job. I, I really like my job. Um, I like what I do being a SQL developer. Um, I like my team. I like my, my, my um, company culture, everything like that. I'm happy, um, but that doesn't mean I don't want to learn. Oh, thanks, safety. Yep, tech stack changes every day. It's best not to. It's probably best not to be a one-trick pony. Even though I do think SQL is going to be around forever, it's it's pretty much eternal. Um, oh, I've been laid off three times since COVID. Oh my goodness. Well, I, I hope that you get a good outcome from this cohort. Do I work from home? Yes, I do. Um, I am 100% remote. I uh, have been since the start of the pandemic. Um, my company was like, yeah, we're going to go home for two weeks and then we'll bring you guys back. And yeah, we never came back. <laughs> yeah, my team, uh, my company actually sold off the offices that they used to have. So there's no danger of me being forced back either because there's no office for me to go back to. Yeah, SQL will be around for a while. Companies that started in SQL will probably never leave SQL. Yeah, I would say so. Um, you know, they might go to, they might switch to NoSQL databases like Mongo and stuff like that. But I do think SQL is, I mean, given the fact that it's, you know, widely supported by Microsoft and Oracle, which are the, you know, massive tech giants, I really think that SQL is going to linger um, and stick around for a long time. And relational, data, relational databases are easy to implement, and SQL itself is actually a very easy language to pick up. The basics are very easy. So if you're interested at all in backend, 
um, take a look at SQL um, and just, you know, you'll be able to pick up the basic syntax super quick. Yep. Any last questions before we wrap up? It's about midnight here, so, you know, I got to sleep eventually. <laughs> Um, yeah, and I guess I will, uh, see you guys again on Sunday evening as per the usual. Uh, if you're wondering when I'm going to stream again, um, you can look at, so on my Twitch channel homepage, you can click on the schedule tab and you'll see my schedule there. Yeah, no problem. And if you're not following me on Twitter, please do. That's where I announce information about upcoming streams. Um, I'm going to put my Twitter in the chat. You can grab me there. Um, it's essentially, it's the same as my Twitch username and the same as my Discord username. I have kind of a unified platform. Um, the Twitter, there in the chat, follow me. Um, I announce my streams there. Um, and yeah, I hope to see you all again soon. Uh, thoughts on cheeses? Uh, Parmesan is the best. Uh, what's my YouTube? Um, my YouTube is, I believe it's also Mayan Wolf, actually. <laughs> uh, well, no, it may not be, actually. I would say... Uh, I, I don't even remember what my YouTube is. I don't ever use it for anything other than just uploading these videos. Um, uh, you can find just go on the go on the Discord and you can grab you can find the the YouTube videos there on the in the pin thread for my Wolf streams. Yeah, grab them from there, and then that'll get that'll give you my YouTube name as well. In the in the most recent video, which is the Twitch port, um, that's the only one that's associated with my channel. The rest are on. Uh, rascal and uh miss mars channels yeah yeah avid good to have you hope to see you again at the next stream all right well with that i'm gonna wrap it up um so i will see you guys again on sunday looking forward to it and thanks for joining me tonight talk to you soon Bye bye